what's going on, guys? I got to give a shout out real quick to my guy, Beyond Time Brian, for that awesome intro. That is pretty freaking cool, man. That's no problem, man. No That's problem. about as apt as it, as it could be. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, well, I'm sitting here and I'm going, I'm sitting the other day. I'm like, I just worked on a new intro. I think it's pretty kick ass. I love JJ's intro. I'm like, Marco doesn't have an intro. He needs an intro. So I, I just thought I'd put something together for you, man. I'm, I'm so glad you're happy with it. Well yeah, done. I appreciate it's it. Great. Well done, well awesome. done. It's great. Yeah. That was good. What'd you make so, that, Ian? How did you make that? I do all my, believe it or not, I do all my stuff in Canva. Canva is amazing. Really? And I, really? I pay five Never bucks a month and I do all my, my uh, thumbnails and all my yeah. intro videos and all that through Canva. So. Canvas good stuff. It, yeah, it really, really is a good service. Nice. That's that's good to know. Guys, I want to say hello to my panel. I got REG. <clears throat> we got a legend in the house, Duco Ted. Thanks for joining us on the show. We got Brian Beyond Time, guys. He just hit the 850 subscriber mark. He's inching his way closer and closer. <laughs> we got the watch Sasquatch himself. And we got Wings and Watchers joining the show. Thanks for joining me tonight, guys. Thanks, Rob. I'm going to go through a few chats. We got Pepe D's notes in the chat saying, what's up? Oh, Marco. Thanks for joining. We got Dugo Ted reminding everybody to hit that thumbs up button. We got Air King Ben. Hello, hello to you. And we got a shot in the dark. Um, I want to get us started, guys, with some wristwatch news, which is very, very interesting. So my favorite independent watchmaker, I don't really think it's a secret, is Kari, Kari Budalanen. I never and heard that he before. Just, he never just acquired... Before. Uh, Urban Jurgensen, which is pretty incredible, right? He became now CEO of Urban, and him himself with some investors are now uh, what's it called? Going to kind of operate operate Urban, which is where he started. So it's kind of him coming full circle, if you will. Um, I think it's interesting because it'll become, I think, more like a Rolex and Tudor type of situation where his pieces are so unreachable, right? Like, I mean, we're talking base models about eighty thousand for a piece. So, yeah, if we can get that down, right, you could own t technically like a watch from him that isn't from him. That'd be pretty, pretty damn sweet, That's I cool. think. That's cool. Yeah. We got the man himself, Nico, in the chat. Hello, my man. I hope you're doing well. I know he's an international jet setter. I think he's still traveling. So, well, he he was he was four wheeling and AT, he was off roading ATV. Oh shit! He had like backpacks. That's a recipe for disaster, man. Yeah, he only was... told me the horror stories. <laughs> <laughs> he was out there hunting in the dark. <laughs> as long oh, as he's not on a jet ski, everything's okay, right? Right. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, we don't want that to happen. We got Big Sal joining us in the show. Hope you're well, Sal. Sal actually just got the new Ming release, right? Sal actually was fortunate enough to get that was a disaster oh, nice. this morning. I tuned in for a little bit of stream. <laughs> I saw everybody like trying to clamor for a watch, and I was like, oh god. So the thing, right, that I dislike about Ming nowadays is that they're trying to move more and more up market, which I understand, you know, it makes sense. They want to catch up, you know, their kind of retail price for with their, their kind of gray market prices. And I understand that, but I don't un understand at the same time because the whole point is that these are like bargains, right? You're buying these for bargains. Yes, there's limited drops, but you know, they're they're meant to be like attainable, a little more affordable. When you're starting to charge 5,000 for Swiss friends, we're talking almost, you know, seven grand. Those are some serious watches you can start getting into. You know what I mean? For, you know, Solita based watches, uh, it's it's a little hard to, to justify, in my opinion, but hey, I, I think uh, it's still a great watch. No question. Marco, can you pull up a picture of the one they just released? Because I haven't sure, even sure. seen it yet. We got the Night Wrist Watchman. I hope you're doing well, man. Awesome dude. He's been a – he's an OG, a legitimate OG. Um, yeah, let me he's a good man. Purchase. Yeah, I haven't even seen what they released. <clears throat> but it's the first time they had a complicated watch other than, I think, a chronograph or two – the first one with a date, sorry. Let me let me say that. Correctly. Were they the was it a lip a limited number of pieces that they put together too? Or? Yeah, they, they released five hundred of these pieces. Oh Jesus, people must have been yeah. clamoring over. That's actually yeah. really nice. It, it's a nice it's a nice piece. <laughs> Big sound. You know, it's just it's not eight thousand dollars nice. No, it's not eight grand. We got Duco Ted asking how many watches do they make a year? The uh, Urban Jurgensen and the oh, so Gary Boodle. Kari makes about somewhere in the range of fifty to seventy. Um and oh same with God. Urban. Urban is about maybe 50 to 100, somewhere around there, if I had to estimate. That's it. Wow. Yeah. So the one thing that's interesting, I'll just I'll come back to this. 
what's interesting is they actually stopped making all their production models. So they canceled all their production models. And next year is a 250 year anniversary of the brand. So like, I'm looking forward to see what comes out next year. It should be a really big year for them. Especially I mean, with this they, they are selling well under retail, like well under retail. Yeah. So some people that we know are looking at maybe snacking, uh, you know, snatching one up. W which yeah. one sells under retail? The, Every watch sells under retail. Or, yeah. Okay. The <laughs> yeah. But there, there's some really, really nice Erwin Jorgensen dress watches, like really, really nice, that are selling for less than half retail. So we're we talking 40 grand? We're talking 18,000 for a 40 grand watch. Yeah. Okay. Right. okay. Which and, is a pretty, pretty sweet deal. Yeah. So, like, I, I expect that they're going to go well and they're, they're just gorgeous and they're finished so nicely. Like, I'm nervous about things like service, but their manual wine, the finish is yeah. stunning. Yeah. It's awesome. Oh. I'll pull up some pieces. I'll pull up some pieces. We got Big Sal with the $5 super chat starting us off for the night. Thank you very much. That's forgive me, watch lords, for I have sinned. I put a <laughs> deposit for a ming. Yeah. That's the, another thing, right? So, you have to pay a 50% upfront deposit. And I think they're only starting. In like July or August, oh, um, which is a little, I mean, that's, you, you're stretching. So the date obviously is at six o'clock and this is actually a moon phase, um, which I have no idea how it works. But yeah, it's, I think it's a very cool, interesting design. I like that they put a sapphire crystal. Mm -hmm. It's a highly modified Salida movement. So Shores Etienne Yen is the, the brand that they work with. They're a movement manufacturer out in Switzerland. Um, yeah, interesting case design. I like the dial. It's all about that dial. Kind of looks like a brand that I'm familiar with. <laughs> <laughs> it does. That, that was, yeah, that, that was one of my first thoughts. Is, <laughs> I just, love the loom on it, though. The loom's amazing. It so the great. one I got is great. probably even more more similar. So this is the one I got, right? You didn't yeah. get anything <laughs> yet. Well, I didn't get anything yet, but yeah. So this yeah, is the one I, I put a deposit on. Yeah. Yeah. And they did come out with another one, which is this chronograph, which I think is really nice. Too. Yeah, that's nice. I love the loom on it, though. Going back to that moon phase, it looks great. Yeah, that loom is – yeah, it's we gorgeous. can just pull yeah. it over. Yeah. So and can this I has... ask a question? Sure. Mm -hmm. When you say highly modified Salita movement, can you actually yeah. define what that means? Do they sure, sure, sure. take it apart and just hand finish it? Yeah, so it's not just finishing. It's I think the base of this, right, is actually an automatic movement. So as you'll see, it's actually mechanical. That's why there's this center jewel right here. It's actually technically where the rotor should be. Uh, that's the first thing. Now, uh, the second thing is they put it up to spec. I think you meant to say manual, not mechanical. Sorry, manual. yeah. So it's a manual. <clears throat> Usually it's an automatic movement, but they, they modified it. I believed it to be um, manual wine, mechanical, same, same difference. And then the idea is also it's more complicated. So there's a date, there's a moon phase. They also regulate the movement. Um, so yeah, I mean, they do some stuff. Highly like, modified, change... maybe it's a bit exaggerated. Okay, so but do they change? Like, do they polish the parts and make it prettier? I don't think it... I don't think they do. Not at this price. So point. basically, they're just making a better timekeeping Salida movement. Yeah, exactly. Pretty and regulating it to a couple of positions and stuff. At, we'll pull up Sparkle's that... comment. And also, <laughs> one more thing is they change like the layout. So like the layout of the movement is different. So like the bridge structures and so, things of that nature definitely okay. are changed. Okay, I was just curious. Modified low grade movement not worth the money. I mean, it's no, no, all no. Relative, right? further further down. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me catch up on the chat. We got David H joining us. Thanks for joining. We got Mister GMT as well. Hello, man. Looking sexy. I hope you're well. <laughs> the captain says that main pick hurts. I'm wiped out from pros Ming uh, hit on early <laughs> AF. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Looks like a Movado. <laughs> yeah, I mean I don't disagree. I don't disagree. I <laughs> definitely don't disagree. I quite like these. Wow. They're they're simple but they're, I, uh, I like it. I think it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I yeah, love that loom. I think the loom is awesome on it. And I'm, that you have to be the like extra really dials awesome too. Yeah. Well, the, the other one in, in particular, um, the loom is incredible because it, it's got that uh, kind of like a effect to where it's the eye of an eagle. Yeah, that's you zoom in on yeah. the dial, Marco. The, di yeah, the sure. dial. It's all about the dial. It's pretty cool, man. It looks nice. It's about as close as I can get. Yeah, looks great. I don't think yeah. eight, eight. What is it? Eight grand? Uh, so like 
It's five thousand Swiss francs, right? So about seven, seven US. Oh, I don't think that, man. It's it's rough. Like it becomes so. It's good for people who have like quite a few watches, but for those who have, you know, are still building their collection, I got to be honest with you. Uh, I, yeah. I would think twice. Like I would think twice. You know. Yeah, there's but a lot more. It's a cool. better, much better watch you can get in seven, eight grand. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Yeah, but this is nice. I love this. This mm. is awesome. I like their Chrono Rise, and they use the Agonor movement, which is the same movement as uh, the Moser Streamliner Chrono. Wow. Yeah, that this cool. is very really nice. nice. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, what size is that? That is that is that is that is forty one and a half millimeters. So not small, but not not too big either. No, that's a good size. Adult size. Now, Duco, you made a, an interesting comment, right? Which you said it looks like the dark side of the, of the moon, right? I don't disagree. Honestly, I didn't see that at first, but I don't disagree now that you pointed that out. What? Well, the back it's of it. The, it's yeah. the back of it to me that looks like the dark side, the Apollo 8. Yeah. yeah and you're right. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. yeah. You're right. Has that little carbon element in there and stuff. Too, mm -hmm. you know? Right. We got Paddock Attic joining us in the show. Thanks for joining us. But yeah, that pretty much wraps up kind of the new segments, right? The Ming release, which was a lot of fun watching the hysteria this morning on Perth show. I'll have to watch that. Well, to go Brian got some big news. Oh, we got big news? Okay. Yeah, Brian got I'm some listening. He got news he's thrilled about. So HYT is resurrecting in January. Yes. Yeah, well, they, yeah, yeah they, that's pretty bad. <laughs> the arch is shaking his head. I like them. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got to pull these up. So HYT, right? This was a watch box. You know, watch box was highly, highly into promoting this bread. And I just, yeah. What is like that? Is that like spaceship? an eventy? Yeah. So this is the minute counter, right? Yeah. And then this, this thing it's is the, the hour. hours. Yeah. And and this on the bottom, the two, oh. those, those two pumps on the bottom, those push the liquid through. Yes. Yes. It's it's strange. Man. I remember is, TPG had a video with one of these. I think Time Peach Gentleman. Yes, yes. He was they showing one. Skull. He had the skull, the Axel Rose skull watch, and it was yeah. pushing all the liquid through. Yeah, it's, it's kind of cool, I guess. How much is that? Um, expensive. It's expensive. Yeah, they're it's wicked not expensive. Yeah, but the cool thing is, is that I think they're going to be relaunching some of them, and they'll be able to be serviced. And they, actually, you can still get service right now. There is a company; I forget the name of it, but yeah, they can. So be, they can get serviced. Be right because the pistons and also the tubes here, there, there's like medical grade uh, applications to them. So that that like that was part of a subsidiary that still is still alive. So you can still get these yeah. uh, serviced and stuff like that. But that yeah. was a big fear on them, right? <clears throat> Yeah, I agree with Kevin. It's a pretty cool concept, but eh, I don't not the watch for me. I, I just like it has my only big fear running through it. it. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Like a Ghostbusters thing, Casio, it's going to be a lot more <laughs> yeah. cost effective if that's your thing. <laughs> we got Omar with the $10. Thank you so much for the super chat, man. Really appreciate that. He says, hello and happy Thanksgiving to the panel. And also happy Thanksgiving to all the bro trolls that spend all day chatting in every stream. But I'll have two dollars to put together a super chat. <laughs> Omar, you are a legend. Guys, I'm gonna drop the link if anybody wants to join by all means, feel free to. Really appreciate that super chat. It's super kind of you. I want to jump into today's topic, which is I have a little presentation of watches I want to be reissued, guys. There's a lot of watches out there I want to be reissued. And we got Ari, the watch. You're, you're muted, Ari. One more super chat. Yep, uh, I'm coming to it. We got the Watch Maradona. Thanks for joining us. And we got the Lone Star Watch Collector with the $10 saying $10 because Duco is here. Duco yeah, man, it's always a pleasure to milkshake have Milkshake brings <laughs> a horologist to the yard. <laughs> <laughs> and damn right, it's better than your... No, sorry. Okay, I gotta stop. All right, let me share my screen. Let me share my screen. Kurt, jump on if you're available, man. All right, here we go. Numero uno. I think it's going to come as no surprise. I've been talking about this a lot recently. It's it's the Ajener, the IWC Ajener. It's got to come back. I think this is such a cool sports watch. Um, you know, if somebody wants something off the beaten path with a good integrated bracelet that isn't, you know, Paddock AP or basically that isn't, you know, 40 plus thousand dollars and isn't a Gerard Perigo Laureato, I think this would make an amazing option. I mean, it's it's pretty pretty straightforward, right? It, it does it. Am I wrong to say it feels like a Royal Oak? Like, like it feels like 
So they were they were made by the same person. This actually is a Genta designed watch. Hmm. Right. Okay. This goes back. Yeah. This goes back to the late seventies. It was made after I believe the Nautilus, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it it was kind of Royal Oak first. Then it was actually the Laureato second. Then it was the Nautilus third, and then I believe it was the Ingenieur was fourth. And then Chopard came in with the um, what's it called the Moritz Saint Moritz afterwards as well. And then Vacheron, the 222, uh, was another one. I don't know what the order is of those, to be fair, though. Uh, but, yeah, that, I mean, you know, 38, 40, mill 40 millimeter case. Anti-magnetic is very important. It is a scientist watch, and the, the modern ones aren't actually anti-magnetic at all, which makes no sense at all. I'd love, again, an integrated bracelet. If they could incorporate the strap change system, that would be awesome. And I want that check dial pattern. It needs to have that dial pattern. I don't know if you can see it in the images. but Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. You can see it very faintly, but yeah. it's got to have that pattern. I want that interesting it's, pattern. It's like a, it looks like a parquet floor. Yeah. You know, the wood right. floor. Yeah. I think it kind of looks like the uh, the VC Overseas Ultra Thin, too. It has a little bit of that feel to it. Okay. Uh, Mike's saying check out this part of the stage watch. Let me know what the model is, um, and I'll be happy to... Um, Happy to pull it up. We got Kevin asking, what would you suggest to differentiate from today's integrated offering? So I would want an integrated bracelet, but with a strap change system. I want something that's anti-magnetic that isn't too thick, simple, time only with a date, maybe. That's it. You don't need anything else. I like I like the original design, right? With the kind of holes in the bezel. It's very gentle, mm. you know, it's a very clear where it comes from. I think mm. they messed with the design and you know they didn't need to mess with it. I think it, it looks great. Great to begin with. And if we're talking more broadly about other brands, which, you know, it'll kind of be the grain in which all of the watches that I present tonight is, I like, you know, vintage watches, but with modern build quality. So like vintage aesthetic, but with modern build quality. But yeah, this is the first one. We got Duco Ted with the $5 super sticker. Appreciate that, man. Thanks a lot. So I guess we can move on to the second piece. Um, but yeah, this is definitely the first and I definitely want to see this. And this is the second. It's got to happen. I mean, I think this is so nice. This is such a nice watch. Yeah. yeah. Omega could certainly afford to add a watch to their current lineup of 529 watches. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but they would call this one a special edition, which makes it different from the other watches. Their yes. current Seamaster chronograph is horrible. It's yes. hideous. Ali, it's kind of yeah. funny that you said that because I actually was just – Browsing on the Omega website, they go, "Holy shit, they got so many watches, like tons <laughs> of watches." Right, and that's the <clears throat> issue, right? The, the problem is, is oh there's so God. many watches, but they need to focus on, in my opinion, the hits. Right, this right here, I mean, this would be a hit. It's just such a, a cool, amazing design. Three register chrono, no date. Maybe you put it a three two one movement. Nice. Keep yeah. it, you know, under fourteen millimeters. I think that would be awesome. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. See, Omar agrees. If the legend Omar agrees, it's got to happen. <laughs> Get rid of the current Corona and replace it with this. Yeah, beauty. you know what? I'm 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 with I'm with Duco Ted on. I don't love Ooh, the newest like uh, Omega Chrono. Do you think they're actually even selling that thing? Seriously, like because it's not cheap. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. I think people people are buying it. They merged. Which, which one is it? The, when they is don't it sell. the Chronosphere? Which one are you talking about? We're talking about the 3861. We're talking oh, about the, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I mean I mean I tried it on it. Don't oh. really feel it. Not worth the money that it costs. Yeah. No, the Seamaster chronograph is the one I'm talking about. Oh, you're talking the Seamaster chronograph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is the Seamaster, this is the vintage Seamaster chronograph. They yeah. have a Omega Seamaster chronograph, but it has that weird octagon looking bezel. Yeah, that's terrible. That's yeah, that's just it's awful. awful. Yeah. Sorry, I, I misunderstood which one. No, Speedmaster is great. Don't change it. Yeah. Yeah. No. I'm, yeah. No. Keep the Speedmaster. I do like yeah. the. I like the new Speedmaster. I agree with Ari. I don't know if I'd be paying the price they're charging for it, but that's just you know what I mean. That's personal. Yeah. It's, hey that's man, personal come on, dude. Yeah. I still. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at that. I mean, here <coughs> it was. Nice oh, we yeah. didn't even do. Right. We didn't even do a quick wristwatch check we for the panel, not. guys. What are we all wearing? I'm wearing the Daily Beater, the Bruce I, I got nothing on. I got the Daily, 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 <laughs> the really Daily thing. Beater, the, the Sub-Zero G-Shock. Nice. <laughs> awesome stuff, guys. I like the variety. Ooh. Only one Rolex on this panel, and it's for me. Go figure, you know? 
So SB is saying, check out the museum Speedmaster from 10 years ago. So they have a really nice, Omega had a really nice uh, museum collection. I don't know if it's the one that I, we're thinking about the same one. Huh, interesting. No, we're not thinking about the same one. Let me pull this up. Um, <laughs> it's just a first Omega in space. Well, so I don't know if it's the Speedmaster, but I know there's the museum collection uh, that had a really nice kind of vintage inspired chrono. It's this one right here. Nice. Yeah, there's I another love the one too. the large plunger pushes. That's awesome. There's a three register one. This is the one. Yeah, mm. this one is really That's nice. That's really nice. You I'm know, these could be had for actually pretty cheap. They're like about 10,000, 12,000 Canadian. That's not bad for what this is. That's very nice. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is gorgeous. And it's kind of similar, right? If you compare it to the Seamaster Chrono, it is definitely similar, uh, but they're they're not in current production anymore. That's why they need to be reissued. Turtle Knight says they should put a Snoopy on it. It will sell out. And don't forget about a sp <laughs> spinning planet. <laughs> Turtle Knight, that's a great I, I agree. You're right. You're right. That's we got your friend Mike in the chat. Hope you're doing well, my man. We got Ron the Shrink asking, Marco, can you help me to do a fundraiser so that I can get a Steinhardt GMT? I'm not even kidding. Um, hey, send me an email. How's that? <laughs> we got the Lone Star Watch Collector with the $2 saying, for the Ron Steinhardt. <laughs> uh, Big Sal says the Speedy only needs an adjustable clasp and it's perfection. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna redo it. They're, they're going to redo the clasp for sure. <laughs> And we got girls stuck in Trapper John's basement. <laughs> I don't even know what this means. But sure, thank you. He says, I finally ran out of Trapper John's basement when he was shaving his leg and applying lipstick. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, that is so Put the lotion on. Yep. Right. Gets yep. The yep. Wow. Yep. No. Put the lotion on the skin or it gets the hose again. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, this went weird. <laughs> no, continue, yeah, Marco. Watch the <laughs> right. Let's continue. Let's continue. But yeah, this is another one. That's and really I got nice. another Omega, which is, I think, no shocker here. The Seamaster GMT. Yeah, like I think this, this was awesome. This yeah, is you so like cool. This watch. Yeah. You always bring this watch up. Like, yeah, I want to buy it and it. just send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, you are always spruiking this thing, yep. man. Omega should send you money. You, so that, you actually, this was one of the watches you had uh, in my stream the other night. You had it on on your uh, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on my on my list, right? Yeah. Well, for now, it's still a great value. I think you know, like it's. Uh, listen, I know, I know. Ali says he hates the bezel, and Kevin <laughs> says he hates the bezel too. Yeah, why do you like it so much? What? I, it's just. Well, it's the bad. thing is, right? I don't know if you can find another GMT, like other than Rolex, you know, Explorer Two, maybe a Tudor Pepsi. You know that is from Omega, right? I think this is awesome. It's just, it's just something different. That's what it is. It's like Seamaster mm -hmm. sword hands. I like the bro the broad hour sword hands as well. I just think it's I just, cool. I, I don't feel this. It's very nineties. It just yeah. feels like nineties. It's got a really long. That, I would want them to now. update it. To be fair, long. like I wouldn't want them to copy it one for one. Like if they did all black bezel, I think it would look much nicer. All black ceramic bezel would probably be really nice. Actually. You you've mentioned the white dial as well, right? Don't you like yes. the white one? Yes, I'll pull up the white one. Hold on one second. It's got like a silverish bezel to it, I think. So yeah. This is the original gray white. The one thing I will say is it's a little monochromatic, like it's a silver bezel um, with a white dial, and then obviously it's steel watch, so you know it's a lot of white going on. But I don't yeah. like that one as much. I like the black better. Yeah, I just can't. I can't. Like, models, <laughs> they should come out with a GMT or Seamaster GMT. I agree, but this design is stuck. Like, they tried to GMT the the James Bond, right? And it's just a mess, right? This is a face only a mother could love. Yeah, I mean, it's, got, it's got the. It's got like. The numerals, right, are the teaching your toddler how to count numerals. Right? <laughs> One, two, three. Yeah. It's like I just I it's can't like a bottle cap with the bezel. Oh man, you guys are killing my hopes and dreams. I hope I can <laughs> wow you on the next week. We got Jeff Lane with the five dollars. Really appreciate that. He says, Love the watch talk. Hey man, that's what this channel is all about. 
Really appreciate that. Uh, Ron agrees with me saying sword hand, pre ceramic C masters are awesome. 2254 is great. Yeah, I agree 100%. We got Jim saying, hey there, Marco, you still loving your Bruce Wayne? <laughs> Absolutely. I wear this thing every day, to be honest. It's, a, it's why I kind of sold the sub too. It's like, I'm just, you know, like once I became comfortable wearing it, you know, I got the first scratch on it. Uh, on the on the clasp, I was like, ah, fuck it, just wear it every day. You know what I mean? What am I gonna? I'm gonna keep this hidden all my life, you know, or I just wear it in my, around my house. <laughs> I kind of didn't want to wear the sub anymore. You know what I mean? So yeah, I mean, it's just it's an amazing watch. I love this thing. Do you think you would have worn one of your sub or your uh, Bruce Wayne to London when you went, or are you glad you didn't take any? Yeah, next time I go, I'm definitely wearing the Bruce Wayne. Okay, I was curious. Yeah, I'm definitely wearing the Bruce Wayne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Did you feel out of place showing up and not having... Yeah, so I had the pizza slice, right? I had the right. pizza. You <laughs> wore class. Like, you wore so, class. Yeah. Well, the thing yeah. is, right, it's like everybody was wearing a nice watch or uh -huh. Casio's, except for me. <laughs> like I just had, you know, that's the one thing. It just it was like a little weird, but eh, it was it was still cool. It was fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What's the next? What's next? Okay, we're coming to it. Uh, Turtle Knight says, I think Marco's eyes needs a check. <laughs> Duke was said <laughs> perfectly. I agree. I agree. Danger said, the Seamaster GMTs are light years ahead of the current junk. I'd update these. See, look at this. I mean, it's a very polarizing look, to be fair. Polarizing. Mr. Perpetual China is saying, this is a nice watch. You guys don't know what you're talking about. I mean, teach their own. It's right? subjective. Subjective. Right. Teach their own. I think it's nice. All right. Let's move on. Let's move on. I still think these are nice. And here we go. This has to come out. Ooh. It's got to come back. We, we need a complication from Rolex. Who made the dress? tribute to this earlier this year? Oh, Brightly. the Havering tribute? Yeah, there we go. Hi yeah, Havering. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could pull that up in when a second. When was this discontinued? Oh, I don't know. But this was years ago. I mean, this is a very old watch. Like, probably 70s, I would have to say. This is a really nice watch. Man, yeah, this I mean, it's, no, I thought it was 50s. Yeah, it might be. I don't I don't even know. I this really would don't. Be I, full killer. transfer. I have no idea. Yeah, pull up the Habring. Sure. Yeah, the Habring Rolex, would, that would be amazing. It's disastrous. Yeah, it's awful. I hated it. Like, people were like, oh, it looks so nice on Instagram. I'm like, dude, are we looking at the same watch or am I blind? And like... It was bad, bad. Hold on one second. Let me get a good picture. No sunshine. Yeah, there's just no good pictures. Okay, hold on. Here we go. Look at this. This is just awful. Like, what is this? <laughs> this is terrible. But yeah, this is... So they attributed this to the Rolex 6062. And it's just, oh. it looks awful. I just don't think it looks good at all. How is that a tribute? It doesn't have a day. Yeah, there's no triple day. The the stars are way too big. Like it the hour indices like are disproportionate. Watch. Yeah, they're really I mean, you could call it a tribute because it's a watch, but that's about <laughs> as far as you can go. This looks like right? a gumball. The dial looks like a gumball machine. Watch, you know what I mean? Like you get a out of a gumball machine. Dial. Oh, boy. Ugh. Super chat, super chat. Uh, let me get back this up on the screen. But yeah, I think this oh, is... Check out my channel. Check out my channel. We got SBSB with the $5 saying, Bluesy, how about the reissue of gold writing from the last generation instead of the white lettering on the subway? Yeah, that's actually not a bad idea. That's yeah. not a bad idea. I did prefer... I, I agree. I did prefer that. Um, but I don't think they will change it. I think once they make a change like that, you know, it's... it's uh, I don't see them changing it. But it's a good point. I tend to agree. So isn't this kind of like the Patek that, I mean, there's a Patek that looks fairly, fairly similar to this, correct? Well, there's a couple of Pateks that look fairly similar to this, right? Yeah. But right. The, but, it, this, but this is, uh, if Rolex finally did this, right, finally got into the, uh, a different style of luxurious dress piece, I think it would be a massive hit. Massive. Oh, yeah. I agree. We got Beyond Time with a $5 super chat saying it's all about the dial, the <laughs> dial, guys. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And, and I think everybody agrees. Ron says this watch is hideous, dangerous in my eyes. <laughs> oh, this is the bad. Look at this. Is that the European Union formation tribute? <laughs> He's not wrong. He's not wrong. That's a great Thank comment. you very much, Brian. appreciate the super chat. And SBSB, thank you as well. Uh, listen, I agree with the, the gold writing. I don't know if it will happen, though. I doubt it will happen. But 
my rationale on this piece is they don't have a complicated watch at all other than, you know, kind of the sky dweller and then your GMT and your chronograph, right? So I think triple date is a great complication. You know, it's part of Rolex's history. They can use old designs and remake this. And I agree with Ali. I think if they want to get the only segment that they're not currently very competitive in is the dress watch segment, right? The only reason they're competitive is people buy them to, to basically get steel sports, right? At, at retail, right? They'll buy a, a Cellini to get steel sports. Some when people you consider do like- the date just? When you consider the date just a dress watch? Not necessarily. Yeah, that's the thing. Is it's 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 bordering, yeah. it's bordering sports watch territory, right? This sure. is the same so, argument I have with people my... on the Royal Oaks, Royal, Royal Oaks. I love my Royal Oaks, but I keep saying I need a dress watch. Like we have the Royal Oak, not really. Like it yeah. can be a dress watch, but it's not a dress yeah. watch. So is a dress watch leather? Yeah, that to really me, it's got to be on leather. Like this is this is very sporty to me. You know what I mean? This is a sports watch. There's no way. I, well, it's more sporty than a, a dressy piece. Gotcha. It's more sporty than dressy. Traditional dress watch. That's a pretty watch. Rolex right? is it not. Is nice. yeah. yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, and it's a pretty watch. Marco, but let yeah, me ask you a question. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, why don't you think they are? Why don't you think they try to be so competitive in the dress? It's because is it just because their steel sports dominate so much? So I have like an insider at Rolex and they said like the, an update to the Cellini was supposed to happen a couple of years ago and it didn't. Um, and, you know, it's, it's been teased at, you know, for many years, all their Cellini lineups, you know, need a refresh. So I think yeah, it should happen suck. and they want to Rolex themselves, right. They want to be competitive in all aspects, right. They don't want to have any losers because it looks, you know, it looks, it, it reflects it looks poorly on the brand. On the, it looks bad. Right, it reflects yeah. poorly on the brand. Right. But yeah, I think I think there's no question about it. They'll come back around. Maybe not specifically to this, but they'll come back around to the dress. What, what dress level game. do you think they would get at, though? I mean, they're not going to get at like a VC or Patek like no. level, correct? <clears throat> no, they, like price wise, you know, they'll get into the entry level paddocks and and stuff, but they won't be like the same, right? It'll be probably a closed case back. There's not going to be a ton of hand finishing or anything sure. like that in the movement. Just yeah. to have something there and be in that level. It's going to be like the like the Cellini is now, right? The Cellini has a hundred meter water resistance, which is yeah. you know super unusual for a dress watch, right? Uh, you know, it's going to be like a you can still use it. It's very durable and rugged and good for every day, yeah. in in true Rolex fashion, right? Kevin says I do consider day dress as dress watch. I don't know, like I think if you get specifically the fluted bezel jubilee bracelet, jubilee. I would agree. Yeah, but everything yeah. else. Mm, I don't know, man. There's an argument. So, it's neutral enough that I, I wear it both with jeans and I've wore, I wear it with suits. When I went, when I was going to an office, I would wear it every day. And, and that's that's accurate. That's the thing. Yeah. But that's and that's the same way I feel about the Royal Oaks. Yes. It's neutral enough, right, that it can fit in all of those configurations. Yes, exactly. Right, but it isn't a classic dress watch. Right. <clears throat> and right. they also made this on bracelet too. Now they would never make it again in steel. The one on the right, I believe, is in steel, which they're extremely rare and sought after. I like it in steel. I think it looks great in steel. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. It would be awesome to get a Rolex triple date in steel. But yeah, I mean, these are just awesome. They, they need to remake this. They need to remake this. All right, moving on. Another Rolex. I think this comes as no shocker, no big surprise here. Yeah, that's a that's a must. It's got it's got to happen. You know what I mean? Completely agree. Completely agree. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's a beautiful happen. watch. It's going to happen eventually. I think they're just waiting for some big launch, you know what I mean, to simultaneously yeah. put it in their wood. And again, I really like these. I like the style, of the GMT Zone Oyster. I think they're really nice. GMT Zone yeah. Oyster, lovely. Yeah. I think either either or. That it's watch a, is going to be $30,000 gray market. The oh, yeah. Day it comes More. out. More. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be ridiculous. It'll be a $50,000 watch. <laughs> Fifty thousand. I can almost buy it. Maybe it'll be. I know you're almost there. And, and you I'm almost room, there. You have room for two minks on top of that. Right. Yeah. That that'll be a fifty thousand dollar watch. Hundred percent. Right. It was. I, I probably agree. <clears throat> and we got Mike what is saying the Hulk? classic is a keyboard. What is yeah, the Hulk I, right now? It's like thirty. Is it in the thirties yet? The Hulk. No, not yet. No, not it's not yet. It depends if it if it's unworn. Does it have stickers? It depends what model it is. Ooh, Kevin says it's going to still look like a Pepsi. I doubt that. Yeah, he says the they won't get the colors right. I doubt that because they have the right red now. 
and they have the i mean black obviously they yeah because the red is different bottom. on a coke than a pepsi like the, it's it's a more muted yeah more 100%. maroon on a coke release a half yeah. ceramic half bake light was it oh, red? That'll never happen. Was it know. red? The hard wasn't that the harder of the two colors? The red, yeah. right? Because it was more pinkish, right? There was three different yeah. bezel variants: Mark One, Mark Two, and Mark Three. And yeah. the first two were kind of more pinkish, and then they finally. But it's true, right? The red on a Pepsi is a lot more vibrant versus the yes. red on a Coke. The red on a Coke is actually much more Maroon. matte. It's like Maroon. very. It's a very yeah close. To yeah, Maroon. it's it's very different. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's gonna happen eventually. Now, this is another one. I think this is a pretty obvious one, but this one is a little less obvious. I think they got to do a Rolex Milgauss update. I'd love to see yeah. a Milgauss update. So, uh, I'm Something like a, this. I'm going to take a contrary position. I never got the Milgauss. Like, I okay. never understood it. You know? So, it's a scientist's watch, right? Um, yeah. Obviously, it's meant to be anti-magnetic. There we go. We got the Z Blue yeah, Milgauss. I know <clears throat> you guys have it. Oh, I know nice. I'm taking a very contrary position. No, man, yeah, I get it. No. It's, you either you either like it or you don't, and I totally I get it. I totally yeah. get it. Yeah. No, no hard feelings. I just love man. the second hand. I think it's so, awesome. So I admit the yeah. honeycomb dial is kind of cool. Yeah, this. that's why I'd love to see something like this, like similar to this. If not, I got a couple like modern reissues. I think these kind of suck. They're like way too plain. You know what I mean? Mm. For a milligauss, these are kind of the the mockups. I'd like to see something a little more interesting dial wise because they, you know, they had the white with the orange indices yeah. uh, they had the black with the orange as well then the z blue milgauss there's also the the what's it called the black gb so they're not afraid to like experiment a little bit with the milgauss you know with respect to design and, and dial dial variation so if i they think they reissue it right and they bring this one back or any update to the milgauss they need to make it competitive as a scientist watch to their contemporaries right because it really isn't like the numbers don't it's not competitive in that regard. The, if they uh, did, yeah. I think it would be it would it would be up a big head. Yeah, we got SBSB saying VC nineteen twenty one. Can it be worn as a dress watch? Um, yeah, it's definitely a dress watch. It's it's. I mean, by modern standards, it's definitely a dress watch. No question. Jim says the GMT needs the glide lock system. One thing that keeps it from being perfect. That and the bezel. When you have a sub, right, you're spoiled with the best bezel action. It's just so awesome to fidget with that thing. <coughs> and on a GMT, it's just like click, 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 click. And it's just, it's not the same. Yeah. What about a solid gold GMT on a Jubilee? Uh, that won't happen. I, don't, I would be shocked if it happened. Yellow gold? Oof. No, I don't, I don't see that happening. We got Omar saying, I love that Duco had the Milgos already. I now imagine he's one box around his belt at all times, just in case. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. I mean, uh, why not? You should keep these things around. You know? Why not keep these I, I agree. I agree with um, Watch Sasquatch, though, because the Milgaus, the name alone, like, was it the, the Aquaterra is, what, four or five times Ten more? Times. 10, 10 times, times yeah. more anti-magnetic -magnetic, yeah. and it's not even magnetic anymore. It's like, what is it? A -magnetic. It's A-magnetic. A-magnetic. So yeah. the name Mill Gauss is not even relevant, really. But you have the right one, Duco. Like of all the ones out there, the Z-Blue is. Yeah, yeah. It's, but I mean, like you said, if they redo it, I mean, what are you going to do? Call it Mill Gauss X or <laughs> right. 10, 10 times a thousand Gauss? <laughs> yeah that'll that'll be interesting kevin says i don't like those rendering though too similar to all the other offerings yeah that's the one thing i kind of wanted to ask you guys right what do you, where would what approach would you like to see with the mill gas if they do decide to kind of re-release it or update it personally i think no bezel i think a bezel on it looks no, it doesn't make terrible. sense that looks like yeah. you just took like a sub agree. and yeah. a mill it doesn't make sense but i would I like agree. to see like dial variations like the honeycomb dial or like you know, something to the effect of the Z Blue, something interesting and different. And I think you still need the lightning bolt hand. Not yeah, second definitely. Hand, definitely. Yeah, of course. Yeah, for sure. No question. These, these don't have it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, no the these first, do first have. One it. Doesn't, but the other one doesn't. Yeah, the first one. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> I think. Okay, so I think that they need to change the case um, style slightly. It's a little to plain Jane, right? If they re-release it, they need to add dial texture, right? And I actually think if they had dial texture <laughs> and 
subtle sapphire coloration, they could come up with some nice differentiation. Oh. And obviously, the internals just need a mask. So we're talking green GV with a with a, like a, a dial pattern of some kind. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty cool. I, yeah. I have a question that I, I know uh, on like Duco Ted's the 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 crystal is has that green color to it. Is there a purpose for that, or is it just something that they did to? We'll get into that in a second. Okay. We got Mossy with the two dollars saying can't stay, but wanted to say hi. Good to see you on. Hey, thanks, Mossy. Appreciate the super chat. Yeah, so the green GV glass. Anybody know? Isn't it a callback to um, old dishware that had the low radiation output, the low radium output, right? That had the glow. I yeah, I didn't I didn't know that. <laughs> That's not the angle <laughs> I was doing. I was going for so. The one thing is, right, with Rolex, they'll typically patent any process that they do. Um, and they didn't pen the green GV glass, I think, because it's so difficult for them to make it. It's like, hey, if you guys are able to replicate it, go right ahead. You know what Good I mean? <laughs> right, exactly. But I, I didn't know that. That's that's interesting. So it's based on dishware? Uh, see, I forgot. <laughs> There, you can actually use if you go to antique shops, they'll put this dishware in glass cases and say, Don't open the glass case. If they have low level radiation output and they're typically green colored and they give off like they have a very slight glow in the dark. And I understood that the sapphire green glass was, was a callback to that. And it has a very specific name. And I live in Florida, so in antique alley, so I should remember it. I cannot remember it. Hmm. Interesting. We got Kevin saying tons of little lightning bolts for the dial. That would Grand be Seiko style lightning, you know, Grand Seiko. That would be embellished as lightning bolts. Really we got the Watch Guy Inc. saying, hi, guys. Just want to say a quick hello. I'm on travels. Travel safely. Thanks for stopping by. Say, I hear you talking about Milgauss equals 1,000 Gauss. Food for thought. The new Aventi Swiss Skull is 2,000 <laughs> Gauss and 5,000 for G-Shock. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I like it. I mean, listen, I've been seeing the watch guy posting his new eventies. I want to see these in the flesh. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing these in the flesh, hopefully sometime soon. He says the Aventi brand, in my opinion, is the next RM. Nice. Yeah. I mean, listen, I think I think it's a very real possibility given obviously the hype that they've they've experienced recently. No question. They have potential. I'm interested to see what they do. Uh, Aventi a real, po very real possibility. To become six figure, like high six figure watches. I've seen his pictures, right? The Sapphire case and yeah. Turbion and stuff. Yeah. I'm waiting to see him talk about it on there because I can't, in the pictures, right? There's no profile shots. Obviously, the wrist isn't rolling. But he told us a few months ago now, right? He's been expecting it. So I'm waiting to see them on air. How much is it? It's not cheap. They're not cheap. They're like, what, 10, 10, 10? The Turbion one. Yeah, the turbulence are about 10,000. Yeah. So they're also, one thing to mention, Mike says Aventi is disrupting the industry. They're sapphire cases, right? There's some titanium or, or steel or metal cases, but I think sapphire cases are probably their most popular. And if you want sapphire watch, we're talking, you know, tens of thousands uh, of dollars. And Aventi is doing it, you know, for about 10,000. So it, it mm. makes a huge difference, right? Huge. Difference. And Mike has the, he has one of the titanium Aventis. Ooh, he says, might be listing mine soon. <sighs> hey, why not? The watch guy says, I'll be happy to show some soon. Hey, that'd be awesome. And he says, next time I'm in Florida, I'll eat if I have. Okay. There you go. He got those two. There's your Aventi hookup. Now. Shot in the dark has it, Vaseline glass. That's only you guys are nuts. You guys are nuts. Okay, let's move on from no Rolex. no that's that's what I was talking oh, about. Like that's what the antiques are called. Oh. oh Vaseline glass. Okay, gotcha. Ooh, Addis says do mill gas in 39 millimeters in black and white. Pull air king back to 35. Oh, that would no. be care. No, no, air king no. 35 millimeters. No. No. no, 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 no. Don't the air that. king is barely tolerable at its current size. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did I say that out loud? <laughs> the watch guy says I received two so far. I can tell you the quality is A1. They're trading double already. Yeah, that's that's one good thing about Aventi. Big Sal says, I love my Z Blue. One thing I would change is make the case a bit thinner. It's a th it's thick for a wind and wear and no transparent case bag. Yeah. That's definitely one thing I agree. So I said keep the same case proportion but thinner profile. I think I, I completely agree with Sal on that. Marco, quick question. Is there any Rolex that has ever done Transparent case bags. Yes, the Cellini. The Is Prince's? the Cellini transparent? Yes. 
Hopefully. Yeah, here, I'll pull it up, actually. Oh, Pardon me if that was a stupid question. I had no, no idea. No, 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 no. Is it modern Cellini or an old? No, they're, they're the square ones. Those square okay. ones. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hold on one second. They're nothing like, it's not uh, huge, right? It's just that little square, but. Still. Yeah. I didn't realize that. That's amazing. That's actually a nicely finished case, uh, case back too. It's so, the Cellini prints, yeah, Cellini prints, yeah. So if you make the mill gauss with the modern anti-magnetic parts, you wouldn't have to put it in the Faraday cage, correct? Yes. So it could be thinner. Yes. Yeah, it could be. That's a good question. Yeah, and the fact that they, they can make them in, uh, amagnetic now that's just a, a fact of modern engineering, right? That's nothing. That's yeah. not a specific choice. Like right. it's just they figured it out. So your friend Mike asking what's with the bezel? So the bezel had some scientific purpose. I don't remember what it is. Um, yeah, there was some kind of purpose for it. I don't remember. I'm not sure. But yeah, this is it for Rolex. Just these three: the Milgauts, the Coke. And, and definitely, I mean, my choice would be definitely be the Coke. Okay, so move on to some interesting Coke. brands now. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Starting with Vacheron. So this is the reference 4537. Uh, we're going to get into some quirky stuff because, you know, I'm a little, I can't give some some regular, you know, some regular I mean, suggestions. No, no little, regular peasant watches for me. Right, time. exactly. Yes, I'm, I'm yeah. too special. I'm, I'm yeah. too crazy. So yeah. this is an interesting watch, not just because it's got those interesting looks, but it's a vintage VC that was oversized, at least for what it was back in the day, right? So it was 38 millimeters. Um, I, I love that. I love that size. I think 38, 39 millimeters, keep that size. I think that's perfect. Keep the teardrop lugs. I think you need to have some different geoshe patterns. So if you see like the pattern here, it's super nice. Like there's one with so, the stripes and then- I love this. I love this diamond pattern. This is beautiful. Yeah, those are super nice. So I, I'd love to see that. I mean, there's also this kind of pattern on the, what's it called? Um, the patrimony. Oh, the food lion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this patrimony also looks awesome. Yeah, I, I, would, I would love to see this. And obviously, I think you should use this movement right here, hand winding. 60 hour powers of <coughs> caliber 4400. That's beautiful. And this would be would be just great. Yeah. I'm not typically a vintage guy, but this is one I might spring for. What kind of dial is like what's the material of that dial? It looks like cloth from here, you know? It's, it's, it's an interesting look. Yeah, that's a good question. It's, it's it's just an engraved dial. It might be silver, I'm not sure. Mm. I'm not sure. Some some use silver, some use gold when they're they're doing Kyosha like this. Um but yeah, it's. I think this is so interesting. I like visually. This I like this. Yeah, one. I love the teardrop looks. Also, you know, I'm, I'm a fan. Yeah, you're into the looks. Yeah, that's what it's all about. It's those kind of those cool lug shapes. Yeah, this is the next one. It's gotta happen. I mean, yeah, that's the one. Vacheron Patron Traditionale. There we go. The Breguet Type Twenty is another one. I would love to see this reissued. Much better. And this style too. I mean, they they released these for only watch. So this was 2019, and this was 2021. Honestly, it looks close to my uh, to my big eye, the the one in black. If you go right. Back. So yeah. they share similar design design history, right? They're both yeah. military watches. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, very similar. Yeah, they're both military watches. Hold on, let me drop the link. Anybody wants to join? That's two um, good choices in a row. That Vashon and that Brigade, those would be good re releases. Yeah. Oh man, I really want to see. I think keep the two register format. Like, I, I just, I, you need and to stop update teasing the us with the two register format for God's sake. Like, actually release it. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I think not just the two register, but they need to update the movement as well. So, one thing that's a knock on, on this watch, or at least the modern ones, the Type 21, is that it's not a column wheel chronograph, which is for a brand like Breguet, it's a little. It's it's a little beneath them, um, but interesting. Yeah, I, I I don't really mind it personally. I just love something with a sapphire case back. If they do update it, I do want to see a column wheel movement. I think this would be awesome. Yeah, but this it's got to come out. This design is just awesome. Look at this. We got Spence saying, "Why can't Breguet make that so good?" I agree, man. No more only watch releases, um, where they they don't make this. It, it doesn't make sense. It's got to come out in serial production. 
Okay. Oh, we got the rancher you... joining the show. Hello, rancher. Hey, what's hey, going on, buddy? Thanks. thanks for having me on. What's up? What's hey. up? <laughs> go ahead, Nico. Do you think that watch brands like this they they get stuck in? We have the machines and the parts. We're just going to make the same watch over and over and over and over because we don't want to spend the money on retooling. That's a good question. I mean, they have these designs in their their archives, right? So they 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 make these for only watch, uh, which is that watch auction where it's like one time a year and right. it's for charity, right? But it doesn't make so a brand like Breguet, which is struggling for retail sales, right? right? There, there's right. no there's no question about it, right when your watches sell for you know 30, 40 percent off retail, you're struggling for retail sales, right? And it's very obvious they've been struggling for a number of years. Yeah. When you keep all of your best releases for, you know, auctions or limited editions, it doesn't, you're not going to build a good collector base, right? So I think it's just poorly run brands. That's it. But, so me, so, but Dico's right about something, right? So brands like Omega and Longines, Cartier, Rolex, that absolutely applies, right? Um, that absolutely applies because of sheer volume. But Breguet... Right. If like either Omega needs to spin them off as an as uh, entirely, or they need to like actually pay attention to the brand, because they're slowly murdering the brand with the current releases. Yeah. Right. And then it, it doesn't matter to Vacheron, right? Um, it doesn't matter to Patek and those guys. But Breguet is, I don't know <clears throat> if I would say of of the better known brands, they're the most underutilized, but they're close. Uh. So the thing with Swatch, right, is they just give them their budget and leave them be, which makes no sense. You know what I mean? Like, it, you got to have some oversight into the brand, especially when they're struggling as hard as they are. And I, I just, I don't understand what they're waiting for to revive the brand. I think this is... Especially, to be it's... honest with you, especially while J, while JLC continues to struggle with, like, they're establishing their own identity, Breguet can can totally avoid JLC's fate in that regard. Yep. But do you Let's think see. a brands the brands that are known as dress watches can survive in this new world where we're not going back to the office? No. They we're need gonna sports wear watches. At, yeah. Yeah, they need sports watches. So Breguet redesigned the marine, right? I think they need an integrated bracelet watch. It's just a trend. Every everybody needs one. I think every brand needs one. And then they need more sports watches like these ones. Let's so, remember Go ahead, Ari. Yeah, let's remember with uh, some, something like the Swatch Group with, you know, how many brands that they have. They don't necessarily want to create the same kind of sport watch across all of them. They're going to optimize for the whole. And so eventually you're going to find that they're going to pigeonhole Breguet for a specific kind of watch. Maybe they don't care that they're the best at, at X as long as they're really good at Y. And that's okay because that suits the whole. That suits the Swatch Group. Right. Yeah. So I want to go back to what Duco said, though. Duco's right that like a lot more remote work that's permanent. There's going to be a ton more remote work. It's not like offices will still reopen, but I would argue, and this is happening in my area and this is happening out in San Diego, especially people are actually making a point to go to more dress up adult time events because they don't see each other anymore. Right. And they're putting a lot more effort into it. And I think those watches <clears throat> still have a place and still have a market because there is no amount of Zoom meetings in which people are going to be able to flex their watches. So you're going to kill the high-end sports watch market as well, if that's the only outlet people have. Yep. Right? Um, but, yeah, Breguet, I'll, I'll say it again, like, Breguet is extremely underutilized. I think JLC is the only brand I can think of that is well-known that is even more underutilized. I think Blancpain is another one, no question. Thank you. I, here's, here's, here's the other, the most glaring okay. example. Give us the freaking mil spec. Yeah. yeah. God. <laughs> At 40 or 41, 42 mils tops. Thank you. 42 would be a good size for that watch. Yeah. I still see makes a good point, though. With the difficulty to obtain sports watches, it seems like there's been a large interest in dress watches, with even some being hard to get. Yeah, like the new Patek Calatrava, right, that they just released. I think it sells over retail, and there's like a weight now for it the Hopdale bezel, the yeah. 6119, which is nuts, I think, personally. But um, it's a paddock. I mean, it's, it's a, a paddock. Paddock. Bre yeah. Bre paddock. Breguet doesn't have a wait list on their dress watches. No, they don't. Yeah. I mean, that works with paddock, but it doesn't work with a lot of other brands. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know. 
Right, but there's also Longa. Longa is another one. It, it's it depends on a few things, right? I think certainly brand name is important. Production, you know, how much you're making, how many watches you're making a year. Uh, like we see a lot of independents, right, that only make dress watches or dressy er watches, right? That you know, there's three, four, five, ten year wait lists on these pieces, right? Okay, let me ask you a question. I have a question. I'm, I've been curious about this for a while. Please. So when COVID hit, it seemed like watches got like a huge like a lot of people were getting into watches and then you started seeing these really big influencers like Kevin O'Leary started like FP Jorn this FP Jorn that. And then FP Jorn was like, Oh my God, it's the biggest thing. Do you think like, you think of this is a, like if Breguet went and paid a whole bunch of the same type of influencers, they could hype Breguet up to where we would never be able to get one at retail. No, because their designs are not good enough. You don't think? Okay. They're not good enough right now. As they stand, they're just not good enough. They won't resonate with people in a fashion that is, okay. that is that will actually make a difference to their bottom line. Okay, Marco, you know, the, you know that I'm about to burst right now, right? Okay, go ahead. Speaking of dress watches and Kevin Leary, Kevin O'Leary. It's all about the dial and the red band. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, okay. Now, I'm talking about, of course, Terry Boone Lane and taking over as CEO for Urban Jurgensen. Yeah, we touched on that earlier. Well, I didn't. Yeah, sorry, I didn't. I, no, I, no, no worries. But how much you want? Uh, one of the stories talked about one of the people backing him up. One of the is a financier with a strong and with a strong uh, love or involvement with independent watch brands. And mm -hmm. come on, I can't think of anyone but Kevin O'Leary that fits that description. I don't. I don't agree. I completely disagree. Kevin has one watch brand that is an actual independent. Actually, he has a couple. He has Ming. Uh, he has what the one Ming, he has a few FPs, and there's some other one, some Icelandic brand, if I'm not mistaken, or some some weird stuff. But yeah, he doesn't have that many in, independent, like true independent watches, right? He has one independent that is massively successful, and that's why he kind of went into it. Let's be honest. Now, what was the, what was the discussion about? What, and I'm sorry, God, I'm sorry, I missed it. Um, so, what was the discussion about Perry Boot Lane and taking over? Uh, Urban Jurgensen. Yeah, so the interesting thing is, right, uh, as far as I know, um, they discontinued or they stopped production on all their current models Yep. for the release of next year, right, which is their <clears throat> 250th anniversary. 2023. Right, which is, that's going to be pretty interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens for sure. Yeah, so speaking of which, put me on center screen for a second. Okay, hold on one second. This is are we looking at an Urban Jurgensen that you own? I think so, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's a big, that, oh yeah. I hope Captain's still watching because we were talking about that exact one last night. Right. So you bought this how many you bought this a couple of years ago, right? Uh no, I actually bought it I bought it from Fed. Now here's here's oh, the sure. thing. Yeah, yeah. Now Fed and keep in mind, you know, Urban Jurgensen has made like a thousand watches in over forty years. Their average is out my limited math skills, 25 watches a year. So Fed, Fed actually had like, I can't remember, but he had some at the beginning, like April, May, right? Yeah, there was, what's it called? That shop that went under and they sold it to him, right? For a huge discount or something like that. That's, not what, I was, that's not what I was told. Okay, well, I, I'm not sure what the story is, but I, I heard like it was like some... It might have been the brand themselves, to be fair. I don't, I don't know what it was. <laughs> I don't know what that is. We've got your friend Mike with the $5 saying for the watch. Hey, okay, man, thanks. I appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Urban, Urban Jurgen, there he is. Kelly Captain says, you guys are killing me. Yeah, so the thing is, right, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. And I think it's very much, we had this conversation earlier, right? It's going to be like a Rolex and Tudor situation, right, where – Kari's pieces now, they're three to four year wait time. Um, and, and they're just so expensive. I mean, we're talking 80,000 roughly at retail for a base model. That's, you know, it's bonkers for any normal human being, right? Like some people work their whole lives and can't even save up that much money, right? It's just, yeah. it's a lot of money. And, and so to, to be able to kind of have a brand that is, you know, a little more, a little more affordable, attainable for the average person, I think, I think that'll be. That'll be better. If that's what they release. Yeah, we'll see. But anyways, enough on Breguet and Urban Jurgensen. But uh -huh. well, enough on this Breguet. I got another Breguet. 
which is this right here. Tuxedo. I'd love to see this again. I really want to see another manual wine chronograph from Breguet. 38 to 40 millimeter case. They got to cripe those damn lugs, crop the damn lugs because they're way too long. Again, I like two register chronos over three register chronos. Uh, column wheel movement. It's got to have a column wheel movement. And I want some different dial variation. I like this tuxedo dial. I like this modern dial, the black one. Uh, but this is like 42 millimeters, so it's completely unwearable. But yeah, I, I would love to see something like this. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. To me, it's a hard sell. Yeah. To me, to me, the classic is is the iconic Breguet. And it's, <coughs> I think it's a hard. It's it's not this is not, If you want to, if you're gonna chronograph, get a freaking bright one. Oh, uh, that's a hot take. I don't know. Ooh, that's yeah. That is definitely a hot take. We got MJT, my man, with the fifteen dollars saying good day, mate. I don't have time to. I got to run. Good to see you on. Thanks so much for stopping by. He says, I've been away for weeks. Is it true the sub is gone? Yes, it is gone. If so, what's the plan? The rancher is here. <laughs> Damn, I yeah, I mean, rancher is a cool guy. You know, me and him spoke offline and we kind of, you know, we kind of buried the hatches. It's all cool. Me and, you know, he's, he's actually interested in things other than Rolex Tudor and Paddock Philippe. So it's nice to have some discussions with him. But yeah, the, the sub is gone. And I mean, I'd love to get a, a Vacheron Historique 1942. I think this comes as no shocker, you know? Yeah. I don't think that's a shocker. And likewise, yeah. it's nice It's nice to discuss watches with someone that knows more than two brands. And right. when I was trying to discuss the uh, well, the the news we were discussing earlier, you would not believe how how many other channels, not only have they not have heard of Herbert Jurgensen, they have, they, a lot of them didn't know who the heck uh, Harry Wooten Lanen was. <laughs> You're kidding, oh, right? That's no. not surprising. That isn't surprising. That's sad. It's really but MJT, it's sad. good to see you. I hope you're doing well, man. I know he's uh I know he's always busy. So I appreciate you stopping by. We got the watch guy reminding everybody to hit that thumbs up button. Really appreciate that. We got the real cars and chrono saying, Hey folks, nice panel. Appreciate you stopping by. And Duco Ted says 1940s Hoyer big eyes. We'll get to Hoyer. I actually, I do have a nice Hoyer that is that is coming up. So I think these Braggays, I'd love to see a two register manual wine chrono. I, actually, I I've, got awesome. the Hoyer, I've got the Hoyer big guys from the 30s. Very nice. Thanks. Okay, we got Dodger saying, stopping by saying hello, Marco, and hello to the rancher. And we got Todd in the chat saying, although I don't collect new AP, vintage 1940s Audemars Piguet chronographs are one of the most exciting underappreciated and beautiful categories of watch study wish they were reissued yeah i tend to agree hold on let me i need to put these up uh i, I can't remember the reference but they have a couple of jules Audemars i've lusted over oh uh, they're not that nice i don't like the spade hands jules automar at all by the way i'm going to drop the link todd if you want to jump on please by all means and look at what you made look at what you made the watch sasquatch do <laughs> look at what you made him do is that the, the, all, the leather, the leather uh, wallet? Yeah, yeah the and I. love it, love it, fantastic. Mm. Now, Ollie, I know you're a big fan of AP. I mean, these are so pretty. Look at this. Oh no, absolutely. I totally agree. I totally agree. I picked so, I picked up um, one of the giant books. Freaking too big to move right now. One of the giant AP history books, and yeah, yeah it's just I, 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 I reduce the pages to dust. Around the 40s and 50s. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't blame you. I think these are awesome. Yeah, I totally would like because the the remaster, they tried to actually like call some of this to bear for the remaster. It just was, it was off. It was just off. By the way, I do want to say hello to Casey Aquatics. I hope you're doing well. Casey's another. He's been popping into the streams. It's cool to see him back. And uh, and see him on the stream. It's awesome. Todd Levin says, Edinger, you are obviously a man of great taste and class. So actually, I gave uh, like I, I ordered some of those for um, gifts, and then I bought one monogram for myself. They're, it's really nice. It's really really nice. And Ari got one too. So I think uh, Doctor Levin sold like thirty or forty that night. <laughs> 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 now you're now you're being risky with it, Doctor Levin. I like. It. Okay, next watch is. Da -da -da -da. I gotta do a couple of Cartiers because I love I love these Cartiers. No, don't I mean, release this one. 
What? Move I on. think these are Move about on. as Move perfect on. to a dress watch click, as click, it click. gets. It looks like a weight scale, like when you step on a scale. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Stop it. No. It, okay. So yeah, here's the thing. These are jump hour. And it's like kind of scrolling minutes, if you will. I just want to see this in steel and serial production. I think it's about as perfect a dress watch as this a dress is pretty watch. Pretty cool. Oh, as I perfect think, a I love dress it. watch. Are you serious? It's perfect. So perfect. It's perfect. perfect. I love perfect. That that a a hard sell. It's a conversation piece. I'll give you that. That is. Yeah, but fucking shows the person crazy. who stands on it to take their weight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, like Coke again. <laughs> are, are you all good, man? I saw no, that. I feel like it's message. something out of Flash Gordon or something. Yeah. Keep cool. scrolling before I download. <laughs> I think it's oh, oh, Lord of Flex says parking meter. That's rough. You guys really yes, yes. parking meter. Well, no, it's it's it should it's very Art Deco. So the style developed, I think, originally in the 1930s. Anyway. Listen, I love this piece personally. I would love to see this get reissued. I think these are awesome. Right, you could talk about this on TGD stream, not on this one. No, no, I think this is fucking <laughs> gorgeous and that they need to really release this and put me on the list. There you go. They only made these in like platinum, so they're super exclusive and actually Ooh. extremely difficult to get. Look at this. Star yeah. says the Cartier Park Master. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I think the best thing are the jokes coming out from this one. Fine, fine. We'll move on. We'll move on, I guess. But we do have another Cartier coming up, and it's this one right here. So they released this this year for the 100th anniversary of the Sintre. And this is, again, I really love this piece. Now, for those who don't know, the Sintre has become super uber duper collectible. Um, but they only made this 150 piece limited edition, right? So retail is about 30 grand US. And the gray price is $85,000. I can nearly buy only wow. one of these pieces. I mean, you, you have that much money. Yeah, almost, right? I'm almost yeah. there. Yeah, but I think these are just awesome. Again, it comes back to this this conversation. Just so such perfect dress watches. It's really nice. I, I mean, Cartier, Cartier really nails it. Like, I really like their stuff overall. Yes. Yeah. No, so what are we calling you. this? For you, I, Duco Ted. I gotta be honest. That's a solid. I like it. Yeah. I gotta be honest. Cartier does nothing for me. Not one. No, I ad Not I one. love Jeez. Cartier. I really I love, love the love Cartier stuff. Drive, and I love like the old. Their dive watches. What is it? The, the it's, it's they've been making the same type of dive watch forever. But yeah. I don't like this. Look at this. Turtle says, if you added a nose to this, it would look like a cyclops. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are wrong. You guys are impossible to please. <laughs> I love it. <sighs> we got this looks like a Fitbit. This looks like a Fitbit. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. A, a Wait, rose gold fit Duco bit. Ted, it was nice to have you on the stream. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry. Todd saying, what about reissuing the Cartier? Oh, so I know exactly which one he's talking about. So the Mono Pusher Cartier Current. Yeah, but they won't release that. Uh, the problem is that that was a very special watch. So this was a watch that was made part of the Privé collection, which was years ago. I, I don't remember exactly when, but the thing about this is the movement. It's actually not necessarily the case because the movement is made. Let me see if I can get it. I like that. Between three different people. So it's F.P. Jorn, uh, who's obviously runs F.P. Jorn. It's Denis Flagellet, who runs De Bethune. Mm -hmm. And there's also uh, Vianney Halter, so it's three of the most, you know, kind of well-known and prestigious independent watchmakers all collaborated to make this movement right here. The tortoise super, movement. Yeah, it's the tortoise movement. That's that's, yeah. what, that's what we were calling it. The, well, we talked about this before. It has the tortoise head. But yeah, this is <clears> awesome. <throat> but they'll never remake this. I mean, I I don't. It's beautiful though. They should. They. I mean, they should consider it. It's beautiful. Yeah. I, I or like on it. the other hand, you could look for the slightly later variation that was made by Epi Jorn exclusively. Um, the Le, L, Le Jeux Parade 5000. Hold on. What am I typing into Google? I don't even I know don't about know this that, one. I don't know this one. Yeah, I don't know this one. Coach me through it. Go ahead, Ranger. Le Jeux Parade 5000 movement. Assuming they could even find it. Le Jeux Parade 5000. See, what hat? Yeah, there we go. Interesting. Now, he because if he's joined took the same movement, he gifted his buddy um, uh, Jacquet, the guy that went, not Jacquet Draws, but the Jacquet who went to prison. 
<laughs> I don't know if I like where this is going. No, no, no. Actually, dark. and Lejupre took over Jacquet's movement. So okay. they have this in the Elysee Nardin 175th anniversary, small production run, in the um, Baum and Mercier, William Baum limited, limited edition. They made like 20 of those. And then. Oh, she, that's the one that you're looking at, right? Uh, that's the one the guy. Really? Yeah. That nobody can know about, right? So Todd oh. says they're nicer in yellow gold. I completely disagree. I don't think they're nicer in yellow gold at all. I think I, the white gold is the nicest. I, or this is actually might be platinum. Now, you can also find it in a Carl Boucher, especially, but just it has to be a uh, mono pusher from about the same time, early, late 90s, early 2000s. Interesting, interesting stuff. I like these sidebars. I like to get people's takes on what should be re-released. This is interesting. Jeff says Nico just fired you. Yes, my pick of the the weight scale just means I'm fired. I'm out of here, guys. <laughs> oh, okay, let's move on. This is gonna come. Well, I mean, we're going from dress to more sports, and I'd love to see this re-release, or some maybe at least maybe just in chronograph version or in a GMT version. Again, I think this is spectacular. I think it's so, too late. Breitling has released 82 of those. Yeah, that's kind of the issue, right? Yeah. Breitling literally just released this. So it's yeah. uh, obviously so, a Hoyer Otavio GMT. Can we go? Can Do you mind? I don't. Do you mind pulling up the one Duke that was talking about? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Hold on. What, what were we talking about again? It was the, the Hoyer Big Eyes. Hoyer Big Eye. 1940s Hoyer Big Eyes. Here we go. We're talking this right here? Yeah. Interesting. Very, um, very much military watch, right? That's a imagine. brute right there. I like it. That's a brute. Obviously, Although, these are really a little nice more stuff. modern. Look at this. They also made it with a white dial. Yeah. These and would be awesome to see. I like the white dial. Look oh at these god, syringe like hands, that. too. Oh my god. Yeah, this is very I nice. I like that. I agree, Duco Ted. I think this has got to be part of the list also. Mm -hmm. What's the size on these? I imagine they're probably smaller. On the 37, 38. 30, yeah. Let's pull it up. Hold on. I'll tell you. 36, which is 36. good. It's still a good size for a well, vintage especially, one. Especially to, for a two register. Also uses, I think, a value 12, if I'm thinking, if I'm remembering right. Uh, I don't know. This kind of looks like the. Is this the 2310? No, this predates the 2310, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it might be. It'll predate the, the 321 movement. Yeah, I mean, this is another interesting watch. But yeah, I just, I, I agree. Ollie just kind of hit the nail on the head. Breitling kind of released this right after I made this presentation, which kind of killed it. Uh, yeah, they just released yeah. this. So. But it would still be cool to see. Super chat. Okay, very quickly. I just want to say hello to Raincoat. He's in the chat saying evening. Hello hey, to you. Raincoat. Hope all is well. And Big Sal with the five dollars saying the five two nine six G sector dial needs to be reissued. Yeah, I I tend to agree. So this is probably one of my. It's probably my favorite Pata Calatrava. Um, it's just awesome. Hold on, let me pull this up. And the G is nice, but I think the rose gold is even nicer. Um, because there is someone on YouTube, his name is Uptick Watch Reviews. He has the rose gold version, and it just looks amazing. So interesting, right, is I know somebody who owned this and who also owned the Roger Dubuis sector dial, which is a lot more expensive nowadays, but it was much cheaper before. And he said the Roger Dubuis is much nicer mm -hmm. than the Paddock, much, much nicer. The dial finishing is, you know, second to none on this versus the paddock. So just something to keep in mind. Well, but he's a little back, crazy. Can you go back to the Roger Dubuis for a second? I saw something I've never seen before, or I don't think I've seen before. What was the the Swiss mark at the bottom of the Roger Dubuis? Oh, it's the observatory mark. Hold on. Hmm. What do you notice? He would send his watches to the observatory. No, no. Where are you talking it's about? Bottom, 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 bottom. Oh, Swiss made GQHM. Oh, I don't know what that is. Well, and some people say that. Um, 
Let's see. Some people say that uh, Philip Philippe DeFour was looking over Roger DeWeese's shoulder and kind of copied the, uh, what is it, the uh, simplicity design off Roger DeWey. Um, I don't know. I don't think I agree. I'll send you. I'll send you a couple of photos, courtesy of Bill Sanders. Okay, let's see what it is. GQHM. Oh, there's nothing about it. Oh, oh well. But yeah, the five two nine six G Sal, it's just amazing. And um, it's a good choice. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, the I one thing know. is, I do prefer the rose gold over the white gold. I don't know. I think if you're going to pay that kind of money, you know, we're talking. I understand it's more under the radar. You get white gold, but it's nice to have a color gold. You know, <laughs> if you're going to pay that much money for one, yeah. I think that'd be awesome. So what is it? Is that the uh, the Roger DeWey? Is that the homage, I think? Yeah, it's the homage H37, right? No, Which we'll come back to. States, that's not hobo age. It's homage. <laughs> oh, you are nuts. Big Sal says that's the one. I prefer the blue hands on pack. I totally agree. And we got Todd saying, I just looked back. Ari, you got an Enninger. He did get an Enninger wallet, right? Yes, I did. You want to show that off? I actually know it's downstairs. I don't have it here, yeah. but it's um, it's fantastic. Sorry, it's I really good. On My only, yeah, no, it's all right. If I had it, I would have shown <coughs> it. My only complaint with it, the uh, I'm glad I didn't get the bright colored leather on the inside because it's, it, it's such a delicate leather like it's tough but it's delicate in terms of the color it stains like crazy like if my hands aren't perfectly clean i'm marking it up so i it's i'm glad i picked the uh more muted color of it oh here we go you learn yeah. something new every day mike davis has assembled in geneva is what it means thank you mike david awesome but yeah i i mean that's that's an interesting point right if people are looking to buy an your wallets be wary of that for sure yeah yeah raincoat mentions the annual dial yeah, so this one is not as nice. I'll be honest with you. I don't love it. I think it's the 5396. One second, let me pull it up. Yeah, it's not as nice in my opinion. It's a little weird, the format of it, because the way that they put Patek Philippe and Geneve, I don't like this at all. Like, you don't need Geneve. Or put it at the bottom somewhere at the top and just put Patek Philippe and that's it, you know? The layout is very strange. It's extremely odd. Hmm. Get rid of the date. But it's an annual calendar. Get rid of the bloody date there. <laughs> what do you? See, our, uh, Ali this is like breaking. This is like Swiss. breaking my face. I can't, well, I guess it's also because the second hand is floating over the. In that particular picture, I just like it. Just looks non-functional in yeah. that particular picture. Do you have a different picture? Because if the Geneva is the only complaint, then. Um. Yeah, I could pull something else up. Let's see this. No, I don't like that design. Yeah, I don't like it. It's okay. It's like it's like with people who have their eyes too close together or too far apart. It's like those are too close together. <laughs> like they skeeve you out a little bit. They're gonna touch you in the wrong place. Uh, that's oddly specific. <laughs> okay, right? there's a story yeah, that uh, a story I don't want to know. There's a lot of history about. there. Yeah, I know. It's very that's specific. Watches, the watch is that you touch you in the right place. What the fuck complication is that? <laughs> you know what it is, right? It's the ones that are too fucking expensive because they make your you know what shrivel, right? Yeah. When you exactly. purchase it, right? <laughs> it makes you nervous. It makes you sweat and uh and uh take a take a big gulp. But yeah, I I like this tag. I'd like to see it reissued. So I have a question. <clears throat> Doesn't to me any watch brand that comes out with a Pepsi bezel, it just seems like you're just doing the whole Rolex thing. I know that sounds terrible, but that's what I think of can, immediately. Can I can I challenge that for a second? Because sure. you're right. I get why you're saying that, but I mean there is a functional reason why there's there are those different colors. I know. Right? You know. I, you know that. Yeah. Yeah. But but uh, it just it just seems like I'm just trying to do the whole Pepsi bezel Rolex fad. I understand that. I get that. Yeah. Well, can you pull up okay. your friend Mike's comment? Because we, we broke your friend Mike an hour ago. With <laughs> <leg owls. laughs> we broke him. Okay, he said, <laughs> according to Revolution Watch, regarding the Milgauss, I've never actually met anybody who truly understands the reason for the rotating vessel. And it's six subdivisions of single units 
one to five. I still have no fucking idea what that means. <laughs> Somebody explain well, that in plain English. <laughs> on the other hand, far, how far back do you want to go? Because Rolex is basically copying Galay, who did it with the flight officer back in the 1940s. They're the ones with the first record. Yeah, but come on. Rolex has the cachet, right? <laughs> Nobody remembers uh, these obscure uh, brands. That's the thing, right? Well, Rolex Rolex has the Rolex president. Galay <clears throat> has the watch that was basically designed by a president. Right. Well, yeah. But let's rephrase what Juco said. The problem is now Rolex owns the Pepsi. If anybody comes out with one now, regardless of – because this is probably older than the Pepsi – Right, like if anybody comes out with one now, that's yeah. the only comparable that anybody's going to think about. That's yes, yes. Whether it's right or wrong, yeah, we just think you're trying to copy Rolex, you, which you, may not be historically correct. You're right. No, I, I don't disagree with you there. I'm just with you there. So yes. Todd says, I know it's too crazy, but I wish Vianney Halter would make more or reissue the Antiqua. And I have to honestly say, Todd, I think you are going nuts. I think the Antiqua, listen, I respect the design, but I think what? it is pull so it ugly. Yeah, let me pull it up. Hold on. So it's a perpetual calendar about a steampunk, a steampunk gets for a watch. And this is it. Oh. I mean, this is like, I don't know. I think this is horrific. I'm sorry. This. How big is that? It's like a microscope. It looks Horrible. I'm sorry. It's like those things they do the eye test when you go to the eye doctor. Yeah, oh, it yeah. is. Like I, the first thing I saw when I when I saw this was like heart valves. You know, like so I have like a. It's just yeah, it's weird. Okay, so heart valves. Actually, that's not a bad one. To be fair, I never thought valves, about. Yeah. That. No. I, okay. All right. I appreciate this more than Jacob and Co. And some of the modern off the wall designs, I could totally get behind this if the brace, the 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 strap system was different. So what's crazy though, Ollie, right, is the way this is formatted, right? The how it's like sectioned out, and it's still all mechanical, but it just it looks so strange. I mean, what I'm sure wrong? there's something if we look at it stare stare at it long enough there's something we can like make it make it out to be but it just yeah um, uh, Dr. Much? Lovin just said 200,000 at an auction this week. Oh. They were, <laughs> they were dead. That's a See, hard pass. I, well dead. for 200,000 it's a hard pass. Um I don't know like the strap is is not pleasing me but this is an interesting functional take. I kind of like this. I I, I kind of like this. Not a lot, but I kind of like it. You can appreciate it. I can appreciate it more. Like I said, like more than people who are trying to do the Jacob and Co. type of thing, right? So I appreciate the fact that it's completely different from any other perpetual calendar really ever made, in my opinion, right? But it's just such a wild design that it's like I can't get behind this. You I mean, know this, what I mean? This evokes like World War II submarines. Like to no. me, there's just. To, to I don't me, see it. Stuff. Looks like Captain Nemo. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. Like, uh -huh. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What's we got Daniel Katz the... with the two dollars eighty saying steampunk design was not originally Halter. Please let me know who who actually did this, the first steampunk designs. I'd love to know. Uh, go ahead, Nico. Sorry. What, what's shocked. the dial on the very bottom? What is that? So on the top left is the date. Obviously, yeah, yeah. the time, then it's the leap year and the, the month, and then the date is the last one, bottom right. Bottom yeah. right is the date. Yeah, it's 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 strange, right? Okay, okay, I yeah. got it. I got it's it. Much. It's, ins it's insane, right? <laughs> the layout is crazy. Does, does this have a does like, this by chance have a movement we can see? I uh, know, I don't think there's a case. No, back no, back. not not an open case back, but can we see the movement that powers this? Oh, there is an open case back. Oh, shit. Not really. Right. It's all, everything is covered. I mean. It's so pretty. You know. Eh. I would love to see how. I guess actually... pretty is subjective, right? <laughs> I just want to say thank you very much for Beyond Time with the $2 saying good night, everyone. Have a great stream. Good hey, night, thanks buddy. for stopping by, man. Appreciate it. Beyond time was and beyond time doing our our topic justice. It 
five this morning. See, look at this. Omar, the super legend, says that is horrid. So we, I mean, sorry. It's a no. I don't see it. I don't love the idea. I'm sorry. That's one of the few independents I can't get behind. Although I love Halter. Vianney Halter is pretty incredible. This is the next one. Yes. Uh, I'd love yes. to see this. I'd love to see this. Re-release that. No date. Keep it 12, 6, and 9 with the 3 at 3 o'clock. The same case proportions, literally the same movement. It's all about the sector dial. No limited editions. If you want to differentiate it, one, one of the criticism was it didn't have like loomed hands, which I think is rubbish, but whatever. So if you want to like differentiate it, put loomed hands, and there you go. I think this is awesome. Absolutely, yeah. This has got to be – this is one of their very best. Oh, look at this. Todd says, see that ring around the perimeter back? The ring is the automatic winder. Interesting. Oh, interesting. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. Kevin says, love the sector dial. Yeah. yeah. It needs to come back. So, so, so can someone – and again, I'm going to ask a stupid watch question for a second here. There's so, no stupid question. So J JLC in particular, you all have a particular – and fixation is the wrong word, but you give it, you, you're very deferential to the brand. Can you sort of explain where that comes from, from a historical perspective? What do you mean, differential? Um, deferential. Deferential. Like, deferential, so meaning, JLC, meaning, yeah, respect. You show the immense respect. Like a watchmaker's watchmaker, right? Right. Because they produced movements for pretty much anybody who matters. And right. historically, extremely important movements Okay. Uh, for that, right? Um, they have never, other than the Reverso, like struck out on their own wildly successfully. And now I think they've just totally lost their identity. Like, mm. uh, there's actually, okay. who is it? Um, Jenny Ellie did a video on like J JLC's problem, which is ask like people to name watches from a certain brand, mm -hmm. right? And and you've got certain brands like Cartier, people mention the tank, Um or the Santos, right? But JLC is like the Reverso, and that's it. Like nobody can right. remember anything else from JLC. But it's their their it's their movements, their movements that they made for really historically important Pateks, the Bacherons, the works. Mm. Right. Like the the original Nautilus, the original Royal Oak, the original Vacheron two two two. They all use the JLC nine twenty movement. Um, and a lot of their 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 complicated pieces were right. also. The original Breguet Type 20, I think, actually used the Vacheron movement or used the JLC. I can't remember, but it might have been a JLC. I wouldn't be shocked if it was a JLC. Right. Um, yeah, J JLC, I mean, they're known as the watchmaker's watchmaker, so there's no question their history is right. incredible. Yeah. And I like saying Gégé le Coultre. Gégé le Coultre. Gégé le Coultre. That's the one thing that's a little weird, right? So in French... You would pronounce this because you don't pronounce er as like e, eh, right? So it's gégé le coultre, uh, but they pronounce it gégé le coultre whenever you like hear them speak it, like call the name. It's like eh, it's a little, it's a little strange. I thought it was JJ le coultre. JJ le coultre. That's what. It's. Yeah, you Big have South the right uh, pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> Big Sal says, "I believe the JLC is the only watchmaker that has never used another brand's movements." That's saying something. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Car says believes the VC Gen two used the nine twenty. They also released a Gen three limited edition with the nine twenty movement. Although it looks very strange because there's a huge spacer because the movement is obviously not not proportioned to the case. But they just lost their way. Like they had a they had a lot of interesting masters coming out, and then they trimmed it back, and now they've got you know the a lot of weight into the Polaris and the Polaris Memo Vox and and the the. Uh, Polaris Mariner with the Masters getting a pretty firm backseat. Um, I just, I really want to see some of their their sector dials. Yeah, I would love to see this come back. This is really the only JLC piece because I have to be honest, I agree with Ali. They're kind of in, in a weird spot, not just that they lost their identity, right? But the problem is, is people don't view them as paddock, right? But I think most people view them as, or paddock or VC or Longo, Breguet, et cetera, right? Um, but I think one problem is, is that they're not at the top tier and they're not like around Rolex, right? They're a little better than Rolex, if we're going to be honest. And that's the issue. 
it's like they're kind of stuck in that middle zone, which is just not a competitive zone to be in. So right. You're basically I, I, calling... I agree with Ollie. They need to they need to think about where where they are. You're basically calling it the Jan Brady of horology. Say that again? You're basically <laughs> calling it the Jan Brady of horology. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. I think I'm a little too <laughs> Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch. Oh, the Brady Bunch. Yeah, I never so, watch that show. Sorry. Marco, Marco. And you know, this one's selling Rolex, Rolex, Rolex. <laughs> yes. Marsha, 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 Marsha. Yeah, thank you. Right. Yes. There we go. Duco Ted asked a good question. What is the Polaris supposed to be? Sport dive, not dive? So they have the Polaris, which is supposed to be sport watch. Okay. And now they have the Polaris Mariner, which is an ISO certified dive watch. They also have the Mariner Memovox, right? Um, the Memovox is a very popular, you know, JLC uh, uh, instrumentation. The um, would you call the Memovox? Uh, would you call that a complication? No, it's an alarm watch. I don't think it's yeah. That's oh, not, well, I, alarm is a complication. It's yeah, a it's long a complication because it's not like I would call yeah, it a repeater complication. complication. But okay. well, if base weight is a complication, the alarm is too. <laughs> yeah, that's there. You go. Um, that's a good point. Uh, now, oddly enough, to go, uh, I tried to get a Polaris Mariner date this year. Or That's right. Year. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Bloody well could not get it. Like, <laughs> nobody could get it for me. It was ridiculous. Like, I can't, I don't know where you get JLC watches now other than Reversos. That's the second JLC in the past five years I've tried to get that's, get that's not a Reverso. Cannot get it. I haven't, yeah. so no idea who they're shipping them to. Is that the one that has a little bit of orange, like just a hint of orange? Yeah, when you pull it out. Yep. 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 Yeah. We got Daniel Katz with the two dollars eighty saying collaboration with designer Jeff Barnes was Halter. Okay, interesting. I did not know this. Thank you for the info. See, this is the good cool thing, right? When you bring up these obscure references, I guess people already know about these things more than you do, right? Yes. Which is awesome. You get to learn. You actually get to learn something other than Rolex. This is the next one. This is a bit of a long shot. It's never going to happen, to be honest with you. Oh, no way. It's no. never going to happen. But it would just be it would just be cool to see. You know what? I, I'd love to see a Tudor sub. It would just be awesome. Oh, they need yeah. to make it happen. No, I, would, I think it's just so awesome. I, it's got to happen. They've Come released on, some incredible trash, and they're running the risk of damaging – the brand if they keep trying to release incredible trash what, to what you, okay no no what what would you say is incredible trash <laughs> yeah i don't think there's incredible pull, trash no, no. pull up the tutor website okay okay oh okay, my god go. no the p03 that doesn't count oh no see don't start trying to backtrack out of <laughs> <laughs> no no that doesn't count that doesn't count <laughs> okay here we go here we go collection collection okay okay you know they need to re you know if they need to rename that new Pelagos? Okay, I think uh, so. The Pelagos is not bad. I don't yeah. really particularly care for bronze or ceramic watches. I think we would agree that the chronograph is nice. Chronos yeah. nice. Yep. Okay. Chronos nice. Yeah. Okay. But okay. Chronos, it might as well be the uh, Pelagos. This is ridiculous. This is again ridiculous. These are okay. Good entry level the pieces. Whole row of ridiculous. Whole row of ridiculous. I think these are all right. You know, they're good entry level pieces. You know, get people no. into the brand. Listen, I'm trying to. I'm trying to give them some props here. <laughs> okay. All right. picking, so uh, now they've just gonna... lost their mind in the 1926 series. <laughs> right. No, keep going. It gets worse. Okay. Okay. So 1926, I think we'll agree it's it's a complete miss. It's awful. Okay, it doesn't so eighty percent of their line is crap. Okay. <laughs> right. So I think I've said this over and over. Okay, again. the Black Bay Fifty Eight obviously are. Tudor awesome. needs to ex they they need to accept what nice. they want to be and go ahead it's and nice. re-release the Submariner. And cool. so the the Royal is a, that's a, that's actually really nice in person. I was surprised how nice it is in person. Right? They're nice. Yeah. But it, they keep they keep skirting around the Rolex models. They just need to swallow. They huh? just need to swallow huh? it <laughs> yeah. huh? and be done with it and just actually do it. Just to swallow, yeah. Okay, and so then what here do we, we go. think about the, this one? What's the zero? No, What's it's crazy. The Claude de Rose and the Glamour. Yeah, these are right? awful. The, the Glamour oh dates. <laughs> these are hideous. I mean, these are phases that only a mother could love for real. I was about to say, Jesus, I thought my tutor AD3 would be well, but... This is another bad one. The, yeah, mean, the one, the style, is, they call it. Yeah, what the are style. these? Come on. Yeah. 
Like okay, I would like to say, Ali, you're correct. <laughs> we haven't finished. We haven't, we haven't even gotten, gotten to the yet. advisors. The yeah, advisors are another you, atrocious. I give point. up. You won. You beat me down. These are nice. I like these steel. Actually, the steel black base are nice. We did the nice. But you might, on the other hand, they came with a submariner. That's the only thing they've really got. So they might as well take the 58 or the black bay line and just set it on fire. Holy shit! How many different different styles of the same garbage do they I'm make? I'm telling you that they're, okay. they're, they're they're pulling an Omega. Out. These guys. They're they're, Omega. Okay, yeah, Sasquatch. Yeah, yeah. He he wins. Oh yeah. Okay, I think I think we got the point. We got the point. <laughs> bring back but, the sub, bring back the sub for tutor. Just bring it yeah, back. Yeah, I would love to see a tutor sub. Stop the bleeding. But the, this is awesome. But it, now the one question I have for you guys is this. Are we doing Mercedes hands or Snowflake hands? Snowflake. See, I, I disagree. They... I'd like to see Mercedes hands, to be honest. But you know what? You know what? I think the the Mercedes hands are a little more elegant than the Snowflake hands. The Snowflake hands look cheaper to me. But it's yeah, also but... true to the original. That's the thing. Yeah. I I say the Snowflake hands because if they do the Mercedes hands, one they would never do the Mercedes hands. But. Well, okay. Then, that. then it's staring the like at people who are into watches already say you buy a tutor like it's a placeholder for a Rolex. If you're buying one with a Mercedes hands, right, you might as well buy a Seiko with Mercedes hands, right? Like you're com <laughs> you're competing on two sides of the spectrum. Todd says, couldn't they just slap some cubic zirconia rainbow <laughs> bezels on those two? <laughs> I got to tell you, Todd will come up with those jazz out like that. The it's snowflake, that. yeah, the snowflake though. I think if they had the balls to actually release anything with the Submariner name on it, it would have to be so like it would have to have the snowflake just to be different. But then it's no longer. I mean, it's still a Submariner, but it's not the original Submariner, right? They just released a, a gold Tudor with the open case back that looks terrible. So mm. Ooh, Casey says skeletonize the snowflake hand instead of that. Big square chunk, but Good then you idea. get then you lose the loom. Are we doing okay outline? Loom? Yeah, outline. Oh, the outline and loom. No flake sword hands. Actually, there's a lot of oh, so no sword hands would be way too omega ish. I don't think that would work. I think it's got to be a lollipop seconds hand, and I think Mercedes hands. I think that would be awesome. So yeah, this is Tudor. This is the only Tudor, I think. Yeah, then we get into some funky stuff. I'd love to see this. Roger Dubuis is another brand that is just a travesty because it's nothing what the original watchmaker envisioned it to be. And it was at one stage, you know, a really incredible independent watch brand. And then once Richemont absorbed them, then they started making some ridiculous watches. I think this is such an amazing chronograph. And I think there's a gap in the market for something like this, right? Where Paddock and AP mm. are just, uh, and sorry, Paddock, AP, and Vacheron are just so expensive. I think they could come in and, and, and steal this. And the reason I say this is, well, first of all, let me, I would love to see like 38 to 42 millimeter case, two register chronos, ideal pump pushers. Even you can do a steel case, right? To make it, you know, kind of more affordable and attainable. And I love like different dial variations because they did different dial variations in the past, which is awesome. But they already have a movement as well that they can add to this. So they can technically make this, but they can't. Like they don't make it. So they have a, a, an incredible movement for it, but they don't make these awesome watches. And it's very frustrating. Ooh, Todd asks, price of this Roger Dubuis. So the That's original ones... Use the Lamania twenty three ten, which is obviously the three two one movement. Um, basically, the movements that pretty much everyone used back in the day, right? Um, I think it's a Geneva seal as well, and I think you can get a different variety of sizes. But the most popular, obviously, are the bigger ones. I think there's the thirty eight millimeter size that are the most popular, and those are pretty expensive. I think they're upwards of like sixty thousand. You're going to be paying now at this point. Um, yeah. But these are so awesome. I think I think some of these two register chronos, like they need to get to market quickly before Longines just completely destroys. 
Well, it's a different, let's be honest, right? Roger Dubuis, it'll be a different, they won't be competing with each other directly, right? No, no, no. But They're I two think, registered Coronos, but, you know, Roger Dubuis obviously is a lot. I think that the longer, they, I, don't mean, I don't mean that like today. I mean, the longer they wait, the closer Longines goes to moving up the tier. Because Longines has been doing like some really nice watches the past few years. Yeah, <laughs> Lone Star says great still, for money. Sorry. Still waiting for the three door black bay. Yeah, that's the funniest thing. Uh, what's it called? Uh, that's Anna, right? From uh, Anna and Roman do that joke like two door, three door, four door on their great market series. I think it's hilarious. The three door black bay. <laughs> yeah, 60,000. I agree. You do have better off. You can get the what's it called? The corn de Bosch for less for less than 60,000. So I tend to agree, but I think they have a winner design that they can reissue this if they make it in like a steel case because they have this, this watch right here. Hold on. I'll pull it up, which I think is hideous, but if they made like a nice to register, um, they made it to register chrono with that design, that circular design and look way better. So this is the design of the, the current version, right? With that movement I was just showing you. I think this is so ugly. Yeah, I don't yeah. like the, the case. This is hideous, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just not nice at all. But they can still use the movement yeah. for something else. I mean, this movement is gorgeous. Some micro order column wheel chronograph movement. It's awesome. You know what I mean? You have a winner. Do y'all think the... Go ahead. Okay. I was just going to say the the buttons the on the chronograph pushers just look... I don't like buttons like that. Honestly, I just don't like it, period. You know what I mean? I just don't like anything about this. Yeah. I, so, to, but do go. I would, Parmigiani has a variation of buttons, quote unquote, like that, that they're also curved on the profile. That's really nice. We got KC Aquatics with a 15 MYR. Not sure what currency that is, but I really appreciate the super chat uh, saying, got to go. Great show, guys. Have a great nice. weekend. Appreciate that. Thanks for stopping by. But yeah, I'd love to see Roger Dubuis remake the Homage Chronographs. I think these are awesome. You know, maybe when I got uh, really interested in Roger Dubuis, and maybe I caught him late, but it's just I don't really like this style of watch from Roger Dubuis because I'm I always think to like the Excalibur, uh, some of their newer watches that are quite out. But that's not right? what the brand was, right? So right, right. Yeah, at least originally it wasn't what it was. It's just I, I'd rather get something else if I were to go a chronograph version, uh, the chronograph way, sorry. But, um, yeah, I agree so with you. But, what else you got know. for us, Marco? All right, this is the last one. It's another Let's Roger Dubuis. This is the H37. So we talked about the sector dial earlier, but they made these really cool ones with these kind of guilloche dials. I would love to see them go back to this. But I would want to see them use it as like an entry level piece, right? The same way VC has the 56, you can use like a base movement, right? And get people into the brand. You have something that's very interesting. You know, it's unique dial wise, right? It looks good. If you could keep it at an entry level price point, I mean, I think this would be, I think this would really help people get into the Roger Dubuque brand a lot more. Steel case, maybe you can do precious metal as well. At what price point would you like to see something like this? It's got to be under twenty, under twenty thousand, right? I mean, if, it, I mean, if it's going to be still using a lot the, of money, but it's got to be under twenty, right? I mean, if it's going to be using the same movement as the VC fifty six, um, and I think that's about sixteen thousand. You're right; that would be a fantastic option because you don't it's get, to it get a dial people like this. in the brand, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And you yeah. want to get people. You need new, young blood, fresh collectors into the I brand. Agree. I, and, and this is the problem. Roger Dubuis is another brand that's struggling for sales. So, yeah, you're right. Like the Excalibur, the, all those uh, watches that I, I've been fortunate to see, they're very expensive. They're like a hundred thousand. So they're not right. realistic for your new collector. Right. And let's so, be honest, most of those watches they're giving away to athletes, right? Yeah, they just are. They're paying them. It's it's all marketing. There, a lot of them are getting given away. So I'd be curious, Marco, if it's okay with you, if we if we heard from. The panel on what watches they what like what one watch would they like to see reissued please yeah that concludes my ted talk guys thanks for joining yeah. i'm it's actually good, surprised it was a good you TED didn't talk it was a good i TED wasn't talk. 
I was surprised you didn't get even more esoteric. I thought for sure we'd be face palming like like through the last three. I don't launches. know. Those, there's this some pretty, pretty good. Yeah, I think there's good. some pretty good picks, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I I like them. I like them. So, so Ranger, thanks. what would you like to see released? Um, no spec, uh, no spec by Bok Pond. Yeah, I agree. But the problem is they did it with Hodinkee, and I don't know if they can redo it. I mean, this is just awesome. 40 mil case size as well, which is what the 50 Fathoms should be, at least by modern standards. Yeah. I'd like to see it. Awesome. I agree. Wings, what do you want to see? Um, that sector dial, Roger Dewey, uh, come to think of it, is uh, that's another one. Yes. gorgeous. Like It really stands out uh, in contrast to that Patek. And that would actually be something that uh, I think I'd really love. Just hold on, this is a bad picture. The 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 color combo, the, that specific watch, stunning. Yeah, the texture on it is spectacular. And I like the like kind of vintage aesthetic with the crosshair type middle dial. I think yeah, it's awesome. not too much. Yep. Look at that. What do you want to say? <sighs> Honestly, I really, really like that Rolex the, at the very beginning that we looked at. But if I'm being honest, if Tudor would release a Tudor Submariner, dude, I would flip. I'm with a, I'm with Duco Ted on the Tudor Submariner. That would be a really interesting and compelling option. Snowflake or Mercedes? I think I would like Snowflake. Mercedes mm. for me. Mercedes for me. This is an interesting dilemma if Tudor does dis decide to come out with this, right? I'm no. sure that would create a lot of back. I like the snowflake. I, I like both, honestly. What if they and awesome. what if they did this with like a Hesalite uh, type crystal? <laughs> now we're doing really throwback, can... right? Yeah. With a, let's say a, a railroad style mini track, right? Like before. So you do railroad style mini track with maybe snowflake hands. You can do the applied markers, but I don't think it would look as nice. Like I would prefer just the loom plots like this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think that looks way nicer. Oh my God. If they release it, it would be so killer. I mean, it would be insane. And, and make it holes case. But how would they? So let's let's pretend they actually did that. Mm -hmm. They would have to gimp it in some way or do something stupid to it in order to not cannibalize Rolex. I see. That's no. why I disagree with that. I don't yeah. think. I don't think that's. I think what, that's what Tudor or somebody at Rolex or Tudor must think. That's what will happen. That's not what's going to happen. Okay. They're not. Gonna, they're not going to cannibalize because they could double the production of Rolex, and you're still going to have the same supply problem. Yeah. Right, so you're not going to cannibalize Rolex. I think they're just going to actually streamline Tudor if they did that, as opposed to the current Omega schizophrenia that they started the past three years with these releases. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you're no. not right. Fair enough. So my choice Fair is enough. embarrassing. Like nobody will okay. like my choice. I would like to see the rectangular Royal Oaks reissued. And I wouldn't I mind think, if they were the quartz ones either. Tangular Royal Oaks. I think. Ollie. Yeah. Ollie, we were such good friends before this. An <laughs> Apple Watch. No, we weren't, this is... we weren't good friends before this. I didn't like you before this. I, you know what? I, I, I don't. I, <laughs> sorry, guys. I, I don't hate this. I, don't I actually I don't like love that. It. I don't I, no, I, I like that. because it, I, it, I want a, a tank alternative that isn't a reverso. And I like again the tapestry dial. I like this, but I like their integrated bracelet style. I'd love to see a reissue of these. That actually looks like a heavy hidden launch. Like it would be a hefty piece. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm rather much that than a Cartier any day. That this is probably the only reason I haven't bought a Cartier is because I can't like I, I prefer this. The bracelet width and style a little bit better but yeah this is going to be controversial like most people disagree with me on this most people are like this was a terrible idea but i think that they i i, I think that they're cool as hell actually i think it's a little too 
70s. Yeah, I wouldn't go gold or two tone. I'd stick I think to it's two steel. 70s. That's the problem. I think if they modernize this design, I'm with you. Yeah. They need to reshape it a little bit. I don't think I, so. Just I think this they, looks they nice. discontinued it in the 80s, I think. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I, I, I just think it is very subtle and elegant with the AP dial. Address Royal Oak. Stay no date. I would say no date. I would say no date. But this would be the reissue I'd like to see. Okay. This is also like, if I could get this in my birth year, I've been, I've tried, like this would be my birth year watch. Kevin says, LOL, great pick on the AP. Mike doesn't hate it. Todd says, it's innocuous, elegant. And then he says, what's the matter with the 70s? So it's a, you know, the 70s should stay in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th I, th I think it's more like the two-tone aspect. It really makes it, it really dates it at that point. But keeping it like this, I'd buy that for sure. This is the captain's pick right here. A Seamaster DeVille. Uh, yeah, I'll pass. I'm sorry, Captain. I would rather see the Chronograph, the Omega, because they already make a bunch of Deville, Deville watches. They're the Seamaster Chronograph, right? Yeah, that Seamaster Chronograph is awesome. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah, it's like an Apple. Yeah, that AP definitely looks like. I I completely agree. Actually, app the Moser Apple Watch. Well, but that, the Moser Apple, Apple Watch looks like an Apple Watch because of the dial, right? If this looks no, like the an whole Apple case, Watch, then... it's literally a rip off yeah, of the, the design, right? Like, I, I, it's the sh people say that because of the shape, and I get that, but like, yeah, I don't know, I because to me that would apply to you know almost every Santos. Is there a picture of the rear of that watch? Is it a closed back or no? It's closed back. No, these were quartz. Okay. These were quartz. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, these were quartz crisis watches, right? Maybe it's good that they stayed in the quartz crisis. Well, listen, uh, listen, an upgraded movement with something like a uh, gorgeous movement. I don't know. Something like it's this. It's not my design. It doesn't speak oh. to me, but I think it's nice. I think a lot of people would get behind this. Actually. No, I totally, like I said, like I totally expect it to be real. Like this is definitely not a popular choice. I just think it, if they modernize it slightly, it would be a hell of a release in a line that is struggling to get the code adopted. Mm. That's Now, that's another interesting topic, right? Which I guess we could, could transition to if nobody else has any other suggestions. Anybody else have, have anything they want? Did we do wings? Uh, we did. Did we do Ari? Oh, yeah, the Roger. Yeah, we did. Ari. Ari chimed in on the tutor. And we, yeah, Ranger? And we did. Yes. We did Ranger with the Blanc Pond. Yep, we got it everybody. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so... Let me ask you, right? Because you do like the coat. I'm personally not the biggest fan. I tried them. I tried a few on actually in London. I felt pretty underwhelmed. I'm going to be honest with you. Hmm. And the reason is, right? I like the case. I will say this, okay? You have to see these in person because the effect with like the curvature of the glass yes. and yeah. the case itself is extremely nice. That what's it called? The the lugs also being scal uh, skeletal. Yeah. yeah, they're super super nice. But I just felt underwhelmed by the dial, and and like it's just it's too but you're simple. Right. You're you know right. what I mean? So that's so the codes I like are the ones with the interesting color combinations or the interesting dials. But like the code, the the code that everybody was able to get like early on was the flat white dial code, and the it's the worst possible dial, worst possible dial for the code. So I tried the, on this one. This is awful. I'm sorry. Yeah, the case yeah, is the, incredible. All the but flat the, colors, right? All the flat color codes. What do, oh, do go pull up on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's that's a minute repeater. <laughs> That'll be expensive. Yeah. All the flat colored codes are, they don't look right. They don't take advantage of the crystal. But if they have a sunburst pattern, any pattern, they look really nice under the crystal. But the flat color, the flat ones, the uniform ones don't. They just don't. You're right. right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, I, or the like the perpetual with the adventuring um, design on the dial, like they're spectacular, and I've always been a, a huge fan of these. And yeah. Ali, you're right. There, there are um, a few dials that I'm not a fan of, but that Cap, when were one, these released again? Uh, that was at this the very be beginning, 2019, yeah. early so, on. By the yeah, way, can I just say a quick hello to Kevin O'Leary, the one and only. Oh. 
How was the purchase of Urban Jurgensen? Tell me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's, going, it's going well, man. But the price, I better, I better pull that trigger because <laughs> after tonight, you know it's going to happen. It's already starting. And now we have Rancher too on the uh, who knows a lot about it. Apparently, yeah. so, yeah. this one is another one I tried on. So the flat blue dials, yeah, I tried both of them. The on. flat, the flat blue. dials oh. do not look right with that crystal. Right. What's going to, yeah, what's going to start happening tonight? I know he is considering an urban. So there's one urban Jurgens in particular um, that I've been I've been kind of trying to get him to get, but you know we're working on it. We're working on it. So which one? It's uh, we'll talk about it off air. Yeah. Off air. Off air. Because these things go. <laughs> so these right here that you have pulled up, right? Yeah. It's these the are the more interesting one. ones. The, the red and the blue, not... especially. Oh, the, the very nice. The white one doesn't. The, again, I don't know why they're selling the white ones at all. The other four look excellent in person. Excellent. So I didn't see the bottom three, to be fair. But the first, these top two were impressive. But I agree with Kurt. He says, why the date? I agree. The, yeah. the date placement is terrible. I'm with you there. More than anything. Do you think they could do anything, now that we have the design team, the A team on, do you think they could do anything with the hands? What, what would yes. be your major change, right? I, I mean, I think they could, you know, the, the so font. Here, let's, the let's go back to the archives, right? Odomar PA. Yeah, I was going to say that that's what they need to do. They need to go back to the archives. Let's go back to the archives here. <laughs> okay. So they all use, I think these sword style hands would definitely look much nicer. Yeah, I agree. That's a start, right? Let's see what else they have. Oh, they use Breguet hands as well. I would avoid Breguet hands, actually. Um, yeah. I don't think they would work in this case. They look like mostly sword hands. Yeah. Um, anything else that's interesting? You just don't like the real thin, tiny... Hands. Yeah, they're not. I don't right. love. I like these kind of sword hands. Would look yeah. much nicer, yeah. Yeah. I think. Um, what else? I mean, I think they went totally modern, right? And they were I mean, you can to... also do. They do the spade hands on the jewels, right? Yep. So the spade hands are not bad. They're they're nice. They're not my favorite, I'll be honest. But they're not. You know, they're not terrible. Not awful. Yeah. Right. I think they're a lot more interesting than what's it called? You know, the the regular hands. I think they need to come up with some kind of shape, some kind of more inventive shape. What that looks like, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, fatten up the hands. At the very least, yeah. fatten them up. Yeah. So, Marco, real quick, not to jump off AP, but this was the Deville I pulled up. Oh, hold on. Oh, okay. So that's more like a – okay, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I think you know what that the... reminds me of? It almost reminds me of – what's that eight-prong dial, the constellation – the glow master, right? Those old glow masters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. The old constellations. Uh, and I think I've seen gold? right the constellation. That's right. With and I've seen them. Yeah. With, with the pipe pad balance. Yeah. That's kind of what this is. What it reminds me of, Cap. I saw those on Theo and Harris just to give. Uh, like this, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, like this kind of stuff. Yeah, they do have the Globemaster, right? Which is kind of the tribute to this this kind of thing, but it's a sports watch or it's a sporty dress watch. Or I don't know, a, a sports watch that's dressy. What's yeah, that supposed to be? That's, this is really great. pronounced, man. I don't know if I like that. That's a great. No, it's awesome, Dad. You got to see this. I'm telling you, these vintage constellations are awesome. They're, they're really nice. It's very yeah. pronounced. That just that picture, that angle looks. That's great. that's my old man's watch. Wow, Ooh. beautiful watch. <laughs> oh, wait, old man or your old man's watch? My old man's watch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, hey, that's a fucking, that's an amazing pick. Jeez. That is. That's incredible. Yeah, I love that. That's a pick. Big Sal says that DeVille is awesome. Roger Smith's uh, spade hand. Let's see this. Roger Smith. See, on the chrono, I, I don't mind the date window, if I'm being honest. Uh, I'd like the. On the chrono, it's slightly more balanced, balanced, but. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I still I'm, I still think yeah. it was a, a bit of a mistake. So yeah. these spade hands are very distinctly Rogers, right? I mean, they're very – I wouldn't even call them spades. They're almost like arrowheads, right? They're sp like spade-like arrowheads almost. Hmm. That actually wouldn't 
That wouldn't be too bad. Yeah. That's I wouldn't clever. I like that. Yeah. I don't think I, I, I would use it on this, yeah, but not on not on the AP. It's a slight modification because if they start doing things that are radical, it's I don't think it'll be it may not go over too well. But yeah, I do like the codes overall. I just wish like first of all, I think people need to see these in person, right? Before they can actually judge them. Because they're actually, you know, I was very harsh on these. They're much nicer in person, right? As are most watches, but you really can't tell. Now, what would I change? I think I'd change this outer minute ring. I want the dial to be bigger. That's one change. Oh, we got Mr. GMT in the background. Sorry, buddy. Hey, buddy. I only see you now. I hope you weren't waiting too long. Hey, gang boys. How's it going? So, boss. Look at this. Yeah, just. I mean, look at this. Wow. Sex dial. Demons. Wow. Look dial. at this. Sex demon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to catch. I believe that. What's Wait, up? is that the chair, Mr. GMT? Give That's the chair. Those, the chair. Give us one of those good wow. ones. Look at that thing. Yeah. No, we, no, we yeah. can't hear it. No. Oh, shit. I'm gonna, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put my headphones on so you can hear yeah. it. I'll be back. No worries. Oh. What exactly is he going to do in that chair? That chair, oh. the head, when he puts it back, it oh, sounds exactly like it. a fart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. It's amazing. It's a very kid joke. What can I say? But yeah, I, I wish they take out the outer ring. So the minute ring right here. I want to get rid of that. I want the dial to kick up more space. Then this day window, just, just get rid of it. Or put it at 3 o'clock instead. Put it somewhere else. I would just get rid of it entirely. You That's a yeah, champagne dial. I don't think I've ever seen that one, by the way. It's not champagne. It's silver. It's okay. That one looks really nice. It's, yeah, the like flat white ones look too. terrible. This one looks nice. It's a see, I'd like to see like an annual yeah. calendar if they're gonna, you know, move that date window. You know what I mean? Mm. Have the day date and uh, complication. No, I think a tri like even if you had an annual calendar or triple calendar with this date yeah. at four thirty, it would look awful. That's the problem. No, no, no. Get rid of uh, the date window there, of of course. And have it more set up traditionally. That way, it's kind of like a modern interpretation of a uh, older complication, right? Mm. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, if AP like this, to me, a, this is uh, AP's modern take on their dress watch. That's semi dressy, semi sporty, right? So, yeah. If yeah. they've gone to the lengths of doing like that perpetual calendar. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind seeing something like that. I'd be a fan. Hmm. Just yeah, and to be honest, what we were talking about of of working from home and and really everyone working remotely, what Ali was saying earlier. I mean, this watch fits that, like where it's sporty, it's dressy on a on a on a leather strap, but it's sportier than your typical dress watch. So conceptually, they're they're kind of where where we are as a as a as a population, as a workforce, I'm trying to get what you're getting at. What's the Everyone point? The <laughs> cat. What's, what was the no, point? I mean, <laughs> no, they're all like looking like Glay is like. No, so no, 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 Duco, I get, no, I get what you're saying. Duco brought up that point, and, and I yeah. think I tend to agree with Captain. Like they're at they're at a point where they're they are sporty enough with the the you know the sandwiched octagonal case in the middle and the skeleton uh, lugs. They're sporty enough while remaining elegant, and that crystal brings something to the table that they're kind of dual purpose, right? Um, in a way that a date just does, just isn't. Like I, I, I appreciate his point. I don't think the codes are the right ones for that, but they're close. Like AP just needs to not. They, I feel like they're force feeding us a couple of like one or two design elements too many. They're force feeding us just one or two design elements too many. Well, I mean, because they discontinued the millinery, correct? Uh, they discontinued the ladies' millinery for sure. Okay. So, I mean, I could kind of see if they were trying to offset, um, you know, getting rid of perhaps those two, uh, the men's and females, and then giving a healthier option and alternative in the code 1159. Um Maybe that's why they're doing that. Nah, the millinaries are a completely different market. Oh. And frankly, the millinaries up until like five years ago, there were a couple millinary device uh, designs that were just 
real prim. Like they were real mice. Mm -hmm. Marco, we're over the two hour mark. I don't know. Oh, we are over the two hour mark. Yeah. So I, I was just looking for, I wanted to find a 1159 with those, the few May dials. Now, one thing that they do that's interesting is they throw in a sailcloth strap, but I can't find a picture of it. But they become extremely casual watches. So they're, they're like really good casual watches as well. And again, I just think it's that date placement that just, it fikes it up. But yeah, guys, I uh, just want to thank everybody for coming on. I want to thank the panel, of course. We got Ari, we got Duco Ted, the rancher who jumped on. Wings and watches, of course, the watch Sasquatch. We have Mr. Kevin O'Leary himself, the newest <laughs> owner of Urban Jurgensen. No, I'm just kidding. The dial. <laughs> got the dial. The dial. It's dial. all about the dial. And we got Mr. GMT himself joining the stream. Thank you guys for joining. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Take care. Stay sexy. Take care. Yeah, guys. And just a weekly reminder, guys. You got to wear your watches. This is what it's all about.